<laughs> oh, he's doing it. Here we go. I'm the strange lady, she made me nervous. She took me in and made me breakfast. She said, Do you come from a land of Okay, are we live? I'm the gentleman in Brussels. Six foot four, full of muscle. I said to stick my mind with. He just smiled and gave me a little mic sandwich. He said, I'm the gentleman in Feel, feel like the Brady Bunch. <laughs> Rodeo, are we live yet? Hey, I'm Todd. Five minute work. Woo! Okay. <laughs> Christina Munoz from Down Under, and I hope you enjoyed that iconic Australian Down Under song from Men at Work. And in fact, here in Australia, the Veggie, Vegemite sandwich, there is a way to have a Vegemite sandwich, okay? Now, when I first came to Australia, I did it the wrong way. I got my Vegemite sandwich and put way too much Vegemite on it, and it was disgusting, okay? What you need to do... Okay, are you there, Tam? Can you get us back on? <laughs> <laughs> what you need to do is spread it thinly. Can you see that? This is how a Vegemite sandwich is made. Obviously, you need the Vegemite. Okay, there's a Vegemite. Then you need to spread it thinly, okay, because the key is in the thinness, and then you can eat away. That's how you eat a Vegemite sandwich. Anyway. <laughs> That little Vegemite, how to make a Vegemite sandwich lesson is all over. The reason why we are here, 
okay, is recently we were in Denver and I got to meet the fabulous guys here, most of the guys here on this panel there who are from all over Australasia and we were chatting and it came very clear that the number one thing we always get asked from anyone here in Australia or from New Zealand or really from anywhere outside the USA is does it work? Does the Empower Network work here for Australians? Does it work for people from New Zealand? Does it work for people in Singapore and so on? And you know, we get it, okay? Because when you first get online, the reality is <laughs> if you're an Australian or from New Zealand or anywhere outside the USA and you first get online, the first thing you're hit with is that everything is American, okay? All the companies are American, all the videos are in American, and often the testimonials are American as well. So it's perfectly normal, okay, if you're an Australian or from New Zealand to think, well, is it working for Australians? Is it working for people in New Zealand? And I'm here to tell you, you betcha it does. And let me share with you a little bit of a story. I love a story. Okay. And it's about a 15-year-old girl, an Australian girl. And she was living with her parents and in her bedroom she was writing songs. And she wrote a song called All For Believing. And at that time, it was quite a number of years ago, a radio station here in Australia ran a competition called Unearthed. However, this young 15-year-old girl didn't think that her song was good enough. Okay, she didn't want to enter it in because she just thought there's no way that she could compete. She's only 15 years old. You know, she had dreams of becoming a, a singer-songwriter and being able to, you know, be on the international stage. But she thought she was too young and she thought, you know, she's just not good enough. Well, what happened was her sister didn't believe that. It's kind of ironic. You know, she wrote the song all for believing, but she didn't quite believe that she would be good enough. However, sister believed in her and her sister secretly entered the song into the competition. And what happened was all, all for believing that song ended up winning the competition. And the artist, if you haven't, don't know it yet, is a, a young artist called Missy Higgins who, who's in the 20s now. And Missy actually went on to win, oh, look, various ARI awards for all her albums. Highly successful here in Australia, and she's also achieved critical claim outside in the USA and all over the world. And I think what's really telling about that little story is that you've got to believe that it will work for you. No matter where you live in the world, okay, you've got to believe that it will work for you. Because when you believe that it will work for you, you will actually take the action required to make it work for you. And if you're feeling like you, your belief is not quite there, sometimes all you need is for someone to believe in you, which is pretty much what the Empower Network is all about. It's empowering pretty much everyone to have that belief in themselves. And even if you don't have it yet, okay, we are going to believe in you until you are able to believe in yourself too. So I'm really excited because the panel that we have here, the people that you're going to be hearing from, they're going to share with you their stories, okay, how they found the Empower Network, why they chose the Empower Network, a bit about their backgrounds. And you're going to be left by the end of the Hangout okay, with absolutely no doubt in your mind that this can work for you too, no matter where in the world you live. You've just got to believe it will and we will believe in you until you start believing in yourself too. So let's get the ball rolling. First, first I want to introduce to you Tam Dang. Okay, Tam, I had the pleasure of meeting him in Denver. He has really the most astounding story. I'll let him explain his actual history. So Tam, you better get into it in nice detail because I think it's incredibly inspirational. And we've got Tam here because he is just doing amazing work here in Empower Network. He's here from Australia. Okay, He actually was in the top 50 affiliates in the contest recently. I'll let him explain to you <laughs> what his best month and best day and all of that, what he's doing there. But he's also got an interesting background in that he used to be a dancer. Like He was actually a highly successful street dancer in WA and his family. He comes from a family with a very interesting background as well. So, Tam, will you take over and just share your story with everybody here, please? 
Awesome. Thank you, Christina. Jamie, there? Yes. Can you guys hear me? You're very welcome, my friend. Awesome. Yes, hey, uh, I can hear you. First of all, I'd like to say, um, hey everybody, and welcome to this live hangout. Um, I am coming to you live from my home here in Magara, and um, I just want to say, first of all, I'd like to, um, you know, uh, thank Christina for inviting me to be on here. Uh, I'm truly honored to actually be on this panel with uh, these panelists, as you see here. I am actually the little guy here, um, literally, in terms of income and my size. You know, a lot of people would look at me and they'll be like, you know, uh, does your uh, five sisters and brother steal food off your plate? Because how come you're not growing, right? Uh, but that's, you know, besides the point. Um, you know, guys, I just, um, I'm really extremely honored to be on this panel. When I started Empower Network um, six months ago, right, I, you know, I, 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 I had a vision where I was going to go. And I knew that Empower Network was the business for me. Um, when I saw it immediately, right, I, I went all in. Immediately as I saw Empower Network, my first day I went all in. I bought all the products. I decided then that this business was it for me and I was going to uh, not chase any other opportunity out there and that I was going to fo focus 100% on this business and I was going to make 100K per month with this business, right? And uh, with that decision, right, with that intention, it's helped got me here on this panel with these fantastic people um, and I'm just truly, truly honored right now. And um, so just quickly, I'll go into my story. As uh, Christina has um, mentioned, um, you know, I've got to, I don't know where to really start, right? But I'll, I'll just go back and hopefully, you know, what I'm going to share, uh, for those of you guys that are listening, hopefully I can uh, help a lot of you guys overcome a lot of the obstacles that you're going to be facing uh, on this journey, um, for, you know, in, in whatever business that you're building, either it's network marketing or online business. And uh, uh, so here we go. So, you know, uh, my background is I am actually a refugee in this country. I, I came here when I was about seven years old uh, with my family, and I have a, a quite a big family. I have five sisters and one older brother. And when we got here, my parents, they could not speak a word of English. So the only thing that they could do was um, work in the farming industry. And, um, you know, they, they go to work early. 5 a.m. in the morning, and they come back late at around, uh, you know, 9 p.m. Sometimes 10 p.m. So when I wake up, they're already gone. When they uh, when they come back, I'm already asleep, right? So throughout my childhood, I had really very little to low guidance in terms of education, right? I was quite free to pretty much do whatever I want. And uh, I remember when I was about 13 years old, um, coming home from school. My parents, they know that I, I would just, you know, won't study and I would just go out there and look, look for entertainment. And so what my, my mom would do is she would call me up and she'd be like, hey, Tam, you know, do, uh, do you want to grab the car and drive to the farm and give us a hand, right? And I would do that a lot. Now, uh, we're not going to tell anyone that. That's between me and you because, you know, you, you shouldn't really be driving when you're 13 years old. And, uh, you know, I did that throughout the course of my life and during, you know, I'm just a regular guy, right? During my high school years, um, because of my uh, my English, English was my second language. I, I was picked on a lot. I was um, I was an easy target. I dressed differently. I talked differently. I couldn't defend myself as a, um, a verbally. So, you know, it, it happens. And I'm just a regular guy. And um, during uh, you know during the course of my my school life, I found it very tough. But one thing that um, sort of uh, saved me and helped me during my high school years was that I fell in love with uh, dancing, specifically uh, break dancing. And when I saw that art form, I immediately fell in love. And I want to, I want to share you this because it's going to relate to, uh, it's going to help a lot of you guys um, realize and understand uh, how come a lot of you guys aren't getting success today, right, in this business, uh, if you've been on this in this business for quite a while. So when I saw this art form, it was something that, you know, really, really sort of uh, intrigued me. It took me over, right? I was basically dreaming about it at night when I sleep. I would be thinking about it all throughout the day. The only thing that was on my mind, 90% of the time in my mind, I was thinking about these dance moves, right? And um, 
and I did it like throughout the day, you know, before school, during school, after school, in the nighttime. I was just, I would just dance and dance and dance, and to the point where it's like a huge obsession. I had a huge obsession with it. I would watch videos on it. I would read books on it, and uh, I would talk to my friends about it all the time, you know. And um, you, you see us like. Um, you know, talking to each other, for example, in the playground, and we'll be talking about, oh man, look, I just did, uh, I just did this move the other day. It's like, and we do these moves like this. We would actually act it out. We would be like, yeah, I did a, I did a flare to a, to a ninety, to a twist, to a windmill. You know, and everyone's like, <laughs> you can imagine people looking at us, right? And they'll be like, what the hell are they doing? But that was the obsession that we had, and, um, and no wonder, like. Um, you know, several years later, I was able to become uh, one of the best break dancer in Australia, and then I was able to become uh, formed a group group, and we were able to compete in the championship. Okay. And you know, our group became second, and this was in 2003. Um, obviously, during this time. Uh, you know, our family business has been growing and growing in the um, in the um, you know in the farming industry, right? And um, you know, during this time, I've always dreamt about doing something big with my life. I always had a big dream and a big vision. I didn't know what it was, but I knew that I was going to do something big. And every it it uh, and this I always remember when I you know um, when we left Vietnam when I was three years old, right? We came to Indonesia for four years. Uh, living there, growing up there, uh, you know, in the barracks, um, getting food given to us, wearing pretty much a singlet most of my life that is dirty and and um, you know um, and uh, and running around butt naked, you know, asking for food. And uh, if you can imagine this place, it's like Africa, you know, like you you look around and there's no piece of pavement, right? And that was the 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 the, the place that I grew up uh, remembering. And when we were able to uh, when we were accepted into Australia, and when I first got to Australia, right, stepping off the plane, I just I looked around, and it was just a beautiful view, right. I saw the big buildings, you know, the pavement, the I breathed in the atmosphere, and it was like, and you know, the fresh environment, you know, it was beautiful. And I looked at Australia, and I was like, you know, there's hope, you know, for me, I was like. Now I'm able to really, I can do anything with my life here. You know, uh, there's there's nothing that can stop me. There was actually hope, and that was the exact same feeling I got um, after struggling and struggling so many years uh, online. When I found Empower Network, when I saw Empower Network, I was like, there's actually hope. I'm gonna make uh, a lot of money here with this business, right? So um, so mo moving on, when when we um, you know, when we uh, left Western Australia uh, in 2000, uh, I think it was 2005, we left Western Australia to, to Queensland where I am today. Um, you know, we worked in, in our business and um, in the first two years, we were, um, you know, we, we lost a lot of money. We actually went in a huge debt. It was $2 million in debt, right? That two years, the market price was the worst uh, two years in history. And um, I remember, you know, losing all the money, and the only thing that we had was our family, you know. So we stayed together and we kept working. And I remember, um, you know, um, coming to uh, Bagara, coming to to to, to this country, uh, coming to this side of the country, we had we brought with us a lot of money, right? And so a lot of people were looking at us like big shots. And when we lost all the money, and you know, people were calling us up. Um, asking for money, the banks were calling us up, the, um, uh, the, the, the fertilizer guys were calling us up, you know, all these people around town were calling us up, asking for their money back. And uh, I remember during that time, right, we had to really, we had to work extremely harder than what we normally had to, right? I remember during that time we were picking fruit and veggies that we, we were growing and we had to go to Side Road and then sell them. And I remember the people around there, Coming, coming past, uh, the farmers around there coming past, and like you know, we'll, they'll buy some things and they'll they'll giggle a little bit, right? Um, but you know, I, I remember shame doesn't even 
register in my mind. We just have to do what we have to do to get back. And we knew that we were going to be successful again with this business. And so, you know, we bypassed all that shame, all that embarrassment. We had to do what we had to do. So we were just selling on side road. And I'll tell you another quick story. Um, I remember we were so dead broke that, you know, we ran out of money to buy uh, end posts for our tomato rows. I don't know if you guys out there have seen how they grow tomatoes, but they'll have like a row uh, that could be about 100 meters long, 300 meters long, and they'll have stakes in between, right, uh, to, to have the tomatoes growing up. And at the end of the, to the row, they'll have like an end post here and an end post there. And I remember we were so dead broke that um, I remember my, uh, my mom my sister, myself, and my brother, we packed ourselves in a small little U. It was old and rusty. And we went to the uh, local craft shop and we hired a couple of chainsaws. And during this time, we had a, uh, a, a, a property about uh, an hour away up in the mountains. So we drove there, okay? And, uh, and I remember this. I remember mom and my little sister with the chainsaw cutting down these um, these these trees they were the width was about that size you know it has to be the right size for this uh, the end post and I remember them cutting them down and they're cutting them into the right size which was about two and a half to three meters long and me and my brother would uh, put that those logs onto the uh, back of the ute and we would drive back and forth all day picking them up and dropping them off on the farm and during that time um, you know as, as a guy in the family, seeing my mom and my sister, you know, with the chainsaw cutting away, tears was welling up in, in, in my eyes. And knowing that, you know, um, I can't do anything about it. I can't do anything to help them. But I want to be there cutting those logs. But, you know, those logs were heavy and we had to bring them back to the uh, farm. And so, you know, they were out there. They were, they were cutting them and I couldn't do anything about it. I felt helpless and... You know, and I still remember uh, that um, to this day. And you know, that's one of the biggest why that I have, um, why I'm here in this business. Um, just give you a little update. You know, where we, um, you know, from after that, after that first two years of, of, of um, you know, of, uh, you know, you can say failure or whatever it is, misfortune. Um, we came back. We started working hard and working hard, and we came back doing what we had to do to come back. And uh, and for the last three four years, um, we've been very fortunate. We've had good seasons with the strawberries we have, and uh, we were able to make uh, you know quite a sizable amount of money. Now we're one of the largest growers in um, Queensland, right? Um, but I just want to share this quickly with you. You know, it doesn't matter. Um, how my life has been, whether we had money or, or not, right, and whether we had struggle or not, right, one thing that I've always had all the way through has been a lot of love from my family. And, you know, this is one of the things as I grew older, I realized that I actually am blessed to have, and a lot of people out there does not um, have. Uh, you know, some people might have been... Um, might have been orphans uh, growing up, or some people might have had, you know, uh, their, their their loved one raped or whatever. You know, th this thing I don't know if it happens in Australia, but it, you know, you hear about it, and um, you know, you feel for those people. And as I grow up, as I look at my situation for the last few years, I've been fortunate to be able to uh, work six months on in, uh, on my business. You know, I don't even have to lift a finger anymore. I have people out there that are working and I can uh, just manage, right? Um, and I've been fortunate enough for, to work six months and have the other six months pretty much travel and learn from, you know, um, personal development gurus and whoever it is I choose to learn from. So I'm very, very fortunate. Now, I'm not saying this to sort of rub it in your face, but to, to, to share the fact that, you know, um, I'm just... I don't know. I, I just want to say that I'm, I'm truly, truly blessed, and and this is what I want to share with everybody, right? And in our business, in our offline business, I go there, and um, you know, there's people working for us. It's nice, right? And but the thing is this: when you're the boss, right? The people in your business, they, 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 they almost bow down to you because 
there is some sort of fear there that you, you might um, you know you might tell them to get off the property or whatever, right? So and when they work for you, they actually um, uh, you know they actually providing you with a lot, a lot of wealth. But the thing is, the relationship is different. I am a type of guy who'd love to make friends with a lot of people. Okay, I just want to make friends with people, and it's really hard for me to connect with my workers, right? And so um, that's why I love this business because in this business, anyone who work with me, right, is actually on par with me, and it's not like I'm the I'm the owner and they're they're just a worker, right? They're actually on par with me. Uh, they're actually becoming my team members, and then we can work together, right? So. The key word here is in this business, you get to work with each other, okay? Not working for, uh, you know, each other or, or people working for you. So that's what I love about this business. And moving into this business, right? Uh, what, again, one of the biggest reasons is because uh, I don't want to go back to those years where my sisters uh, have to lift heavy watermelons, right, to pass uh, up to, you know, another sister up on the truck. And I don't want my mom and, and, and sister have to be out there again cutting down these logs, right? So we don't, we don't want to go back there. Uh, and the reason we might have to because we can't control the market, we can't control the weather, right? And so and that's why I'm here, in, here building a business online. Here you get, you have total control, right? Uh, once you've got everything set up and once you've built the, the core skill of becoming a, a, a truly good marketer, right? You're going to be successful whether you build an online business, a, 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 a network marketing business offline, or you know anywhere. If you're a good marketer, right, and you build that core skill, and that's what we teach you here in Empower Network. Um, you're going to be successful no matter what business, what industry, what profession you're in. You're going to be successful at. So um, you know, within uh, the last six months, I've been fortunate enough to travel to um, Austin, Orlando, Chicago, Miami. And recently, Denver. In my first 90 days in Empower Network, I was able to make uh, by listening to the exact instruction. You know uh, what David Wood teaches inside the system. I was able to make my first 4,600 online. And as you can imagine, how that would feel, right? And um, and because I'm mentioning income here right now, uh, there's an income link behind, below this video. Just hit that link. Go to uh, go to our average earning income page, and you can see the income there. Um, but and again, guys, I just because I had the intention of what I want to do with this business, I just kept working hard and working hard. And um, you know, recently I was able to make it on the leaderboard in the competition. I was able to be uh, be ranked top 50 in a power network. And and then again, like in Denver, I connected with um, you know a lot of marketers. Uh, Christina uh, was one, one of those uh, people, and I'll uh, you know I'll save her introduction for later, and I'll talk more about Christina later. But I'm so privileged for have to having her connected with me and having me on this hangout. And the reason she's done that, guys, is because I've been you know putting in the work. I've been taking action, and I've been just you know working my butt off. And Christina seen that. And she's like, all right, we're going to have you on this hangout. So, again, I'm very uh, honored and, and privileged. And I'm so glad uh, for all of you guys to be here right now because these guys that you see on this panel, they're yep. going to show, really show you what's possible. So, with that being said, I want to pass well it done. to you. Yeah, Tam, you know, I think you raise so I mean, that is an incredible story, you know. I do relate a little bit to your story because I'm an immigrant too, you know. <laughs> I actually came to Australia when I was six or seven, not speaking a word of English as well, <laughs> from Spain. Oh, wow. So I, I know what it feels like to sort of come to a new country, not speak the language, not understand the culture, have to learn the language, be teased, because while everybody was having Vegemite sandwiches, I was having chorizo in my, <laughs> in my rolls, which smelled, you know. So I think what's key from what you're sharing there is that your family had a real drive you know, from the sounds of things, they were able to literally go from rags to riches with strawberries. <laughs> I think that's fabulous. Okay, and you obviously really witnessed that. You you, you, you watched your parents have that strong eth work ethic, okay, which you've obviously applied to your life. You've seen the ups and downs and you understand that failure is not really failure. 
okay? It's just part of what's involved when you're trying to be successful at something. And you found an obsession when you were young when, when it comes to your dancing. And I think that's key even in what we're doing online. Like if you want to build a successful online business, the sort of things that you've done in your past that you've been successful at, anything that you've been able to achieve in your life, the mindset you've had, the way you thought is sort of what you need to bring to the table here. Okay, so you do sort of need to fall in love with your business, the business that you're building. You need to fall in love with the process of building your business. Okay, you need to get obsessed with it <laughs> like we all are. And every single one of you here on this panel has displayed that. That's part of why you're all so successful and are just on your way up. So I really appreciate you, Tam, sharing your story there. I'm sure lots of people gain value from that. And now <laughs> I'm seeing Erica's face here with a cap and I've got to hand it out to Erica. Okay, I would say er er Erica is actually across the Tasman in New Zealand. She's actually originally from New Zealand, but she is actually now in trans transformate. I can never pronounce it. Transylvania. Okay, <laughs> in Europe, Dracula Land. Love it. I'm an ex goth. And Erica, look, I've had the joy of getting to know Erica over the, the last year, and and she holds a, a very very special place in my heart. I mean, when you hear her story, she's literally come from. Total heartache, really, and desperation and, and struggle to, you know, creating a, a six-figure income here online with Empower. And she now travels the world, is, um, I believe, probably the top income earner, New Zealand income earner in the company. And she just gives so much inspiration and value to anybody that comes in contact with her, including myself. And I don't really want to steal her thunder. <laughs> <laughs> Let me introduce you to Erica. Erica, darling, please share your story because I know uh, what a, a powerful impact that will have and, and, you know, your journey here with Empower as well and what's helped you be successful here with Empower, being a New oh. Zealander. Take it <laughs> over, darling. First, uh, <laughs> I, thank you so much for that. i got to tell you, if you... <laughs> 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 I love it, love it. Um, the first oh, thing I just want to say, you know, if, if you told me um, that, you know, 12 months after hearing your name that I'd be sitting on a panel with you, um, I would have said at the time, you are crazy. <laughs> I can't see that ever happening. So this Rubbish. for me is just, um, <laughs> well, I was in a deep, dark place when I first heard your name. So uh, I just want to thank you so much for, you know, inviting me on this panel and uh, for allowing me to share and just, you know, I know, by the grace of God that we're all here together to, to be able to share our stories is just phenomenal and I, and I don't take that lightly and I don't you know say that lightly but um, I just want to you know go back a little bit and, and, and kind of give you guys a, a background on, on you know who Alex and I are and how we ended up where we are. Um, we were out, out auctioning us on cruise ships and I'd been on cruise ships for 11 years and my husband had been on ships for about um, gosh about seven years. And you know, we met on ships, which is a wonderful thing about ships. You know, you have this incredible life, you meet fabulous people, and you do, you have an incredible adventure. Um, the problem for us though is that we were in a commission only job. So when you're in a commission only job and there's a huge, massive financial crisis, <laughs> things tend to go down pretty, you know, they, they, they go downhill really, really fast. And we were selling art uh, on cruise ships. So in 2008, everything literally just collapsed all around us. You know, we um, had been living the high life. We had, um, you know, been having a great success at what we were doing. Um, and then three years after the financial crisis, we opened up a check for $9.38. And we're like, what? That was for like a week's work, $9.38. And we're like, who can live on that? You know, and it was our breaking point. And I think, you know, for all of you listening, for you to even be at this point means you've had your own breaking point where you've looked at your life, you've looked around at what's going on, and you're like, you know what, this just doesn't cut it anymore. And you, you, you're searching for more, you're searching for something better, and that's how you've ended up where you are right now. And for many of us, like for us, you know, when it came to our, you know, our online adventure, we saw some, you know, fancy pages with some big buttons and they all said if you press this button now I promise you the world you know you're gonna get traffic you're gonna get leads you're gonna get signups you're gonna get rich okay now we believed that so we quit ships cold turkey like we literally walked off the ship you're supposed to have a six-month contract I think we walked off after about five weeks and we went back to New Zealand and we believed that we were gonna be successful really fast 
Can you relate? <laughs> and after two months, it didn't happen. And we couldn't understand why. They promised us we'd be rich quick. And I believed them. And I think, you know, if you guys are listening in Australia and New Zealand, I actually think being down under is a good thing because you actually miss a lot of the hype. <laughs> okay. If we had known then what we know now, maybe we wouldn't have kept gutting it out because we didn't know any better. And this is another part of our story which I think is, is a blessing for us in a way. We didn't have any experience in MLM or network marketing. When it comes to internet marketing, we didn't even have a Facebook account when we started. We knew nothing. All we knew was we couldn't go back to the job we were doing and we had to make this work. Well, what I haven't mentioned so far is that we were actually trying to make a hundred things work at the same time. <laughs> and if you can imagine what it's like when you've split your focus into a hundred different directions, um, you're going to have scattered results in a hundred different directions. And so Alex and I, we were trying to build our own blog. We were trying to make some affiliate marketing things work. We were just following a hundred different paths. And it got to the point, and this is where Christina comes into my story, it got to the point in May of 2012 where we just hit a wall and Alex hit a wall and our marriage was really um, uh, at a bad, bad place. It was, it was a bad place. And I remember I was on a Monday night call. It was one of those, when we were having those webinars back in the day, you know, and you could see everything streaming. And I remember Christina's name. I was reading in the comments. She was going, yeah, I'm just focusing on one a day, one a day. I'm getting one a day. And I'm like, what does she mean she's getting one a day? <laughs> I'm like, how does that happen? And, um, I, I, and then I saw she was from Australia. And I'm like, this chick from Australia is getting one a day. And I'm like, damn. And I reached out. You know, because I was at that point where I'm like, okay, I've given this everything from October of 2011 through to um, May of 2012. I'd given it, well, I'd given 100 things 100%, right? And nothing was happening. And I reached out to Christina, and she was the first person I ever shared um, the fact that my marriage was in trouble because I was so ashamed of that. Like, how do you admit something like that? That's just... You know, you don't, you don't admit failure, you know, and she, in a very, very private note, I mentioned it to her. And, you know, God bless Christina because she reached back to me and she had so many comforting, you know, words of advice. And the one thing that she said that stuck out above everything else was she said, Erica, the only difference between me and you is time. And when she said that, all of a sudden, this, I don't know, this fire got burned up inside me. I'm like, you know what? She's so right. How dare I compare myself with all of these other people? And, you know, then I started to listen to other people's stories. And I realized they'd been in MLM before. They'd been in direct marketing. They'd been in internet marketing. And here I was, a baby, just a little baby online, crying, like, why aren't I getting one a day, two a day? How come it's not happening for me? And I'm like, girlfriend, you ain't earned your stripes yet. That's what I realized. I hadn't earned my stripes yet. I hadn't cut the mustard. I hadn't been in the game long enough. And... I made a decision um, when you know the crap hit the fan in my life that I was going to have to just focus on one direction, and I decided to drop everything that we were doing and focus on Empower Network. And the first thing I had to do was get to Atlanta because I knew there was something in this whole get to event, get to events that stuck with me. They were saying, if you're behind your computer and you think you can build this business, forget about it. If you get to events, you'll build your business. And true story, when I downloaded my event ticket, I went down to the beach in Napier, Marine Parade, and I sat on the beach, and I was, you know, just devastated that, you know, my, again, my marriage is on the rocks, and, and, and things weren't working out like they promised they'd work out. And I had this ticket in my hand, it was don't be a wussy. And I sat on the beach, and I held it up to the camera, and I said, I'm jumping on four planes, I'm getting to Atlanta, and don't you dare join anyone that hasn't got the guts to get on a plane and go to the other side of the world and go to an event. And you know what? It was just weird. I think I got, God, it was between, I think it was between 8 or 12 signups before I left New Zealand. And then by the time I landed in Atlanta, it was weird. Every time I got to an airport, it was like a Wi Fi signal. Damn. Dave and Dave, you've just signed up a new member. I'm like, what? And then I get to another airport. Dave and Dave, you've just signed up a new member. I'm like, what? By the time I got to Atlanta, I had about another four or five people join the business. You know, and I'm like, okay, he said go to events and you'll get a business. I'm like, what? It's that easy? But it wasn't. It wasn't 
that easy. It was the fact that people could hear the fire and they could hear the conviction in my voice. When I said, I'm going to Atlanta and I'm going to pick up the secrets, and I'm going to make the connections, people understood my fire and then they started to believe in me. And that event in Atlanta turned my life around. Four months later, income disclosure coming up, four months later we had our first $10,000 month. We made $11,596 in October of 2012. <laughs> Results vary. Hit the income disclosure link below this video to see average earnings. You watching right now, darling, you're not average. If you're on this call, you're not average. Okay? None of us on this panel are average. No one who goes after their dreams is average. And I knew that my why was strong enough to make me cry. I was given an ultimatum by a lot of people around me. You quit this foolishness, you go and get a real job, or you go back to ships. Well, you know what? They say, you know, your why has to make you cry. I developed an autoimmune disease, which I believe I brought on because I desperately did not want to go back to ships. And because I developed this autoimmune disease, I couldn't even pass my medical, even if I wanted to go back to ships, which I did not. So the power of the mind, guys, be very careful. I developed a disease that prevented me from going back to the job that I didn't want to go back to. That's scary. Okay, so be very careful what you put up here. And my only other alternative was, if this didn't work, was I had to go and get a minimum wage job because I had no qualifications. The only thing I know how to do is sell and bust tables. That's my experience. That's my total experience. Selling, I think, is one of the best skills one can have. <laughs> Develop that skill. <laughs> and so I wasn't going to go and bust tables. That was not for me. So I gutted it out. And you know what? This whole thing about can you make it in New Zealand or make it in Australia, I have one word for you guys. You have no idea how far ahead of the curve you are because you're in New Zealand and because you're in Australia, you have uncharted territory, okay? You know how when you're living in Australia and New Zealand, you always feel like you're 10 years behind America, you know? That works in your favor now because you are kind of like 10 years behind what everything you know, is happening in the States. This is your time. This is virgin territory. And Power Network is wide open, wide open. And trust me, Coming from New Zealand, coming from Navy, no one's online. If, you, if, you, if you're overseas, right, and you Google something, you're going to find it real quick. Try and Google um, cigars, Napier, New Zealand. Really? You might find cigars in Auckland if you are lucky. Trust me, darling. No one's online down under. And if they are, it is like 0.1% of the population who are online. So trust me, being in New Zealand, Australia, it is a good thing. You have got this <laughs> so easy because of your proximity. I remember I did feel that the the distance was a challenge. I felt like I was on the other side of the world and they're like, that's some stinking thinking right there. You know why? This is the internet, baby. I am one click away from anyone on the planet. This is an internet business. Proximity, geography, means nothing. Means nothing. So darlings, I just want to leave you with this. <laughs> I was in the back office the other day and I was adding up the sums and I'm like, I looked at Alex and I'm like, sweetheart, We've just made $75,912 since the 1st of June 2012. Oh my God! Who does that in their first year online? Results vary. Hit the income link below this video, okay? Average results for, you know, average people, darlings. Again, watching, you're not average. No one on this panel is average, okay? So don't even worry about that average thing. Um, and I'm like, how the hell could two totally freaking clueless newbies who didn't have a Facebook account, didn't know what Twitter was. You know what I thought Twitter was? I knew it was something that Demi and Ashton did with each other, but I didn't know what it was. I, I knew they were tweeting, but what the hell is a tweet, okay? This is how dumb I was. You know how dumb I am with Facebook? I only found out the other day, after being over a year online, that I need to turn notifications on if I want to see what my friends are doing on Facebook. I could never understand why people knew when I posted a picture. And I'm like, how do they know I just did that? And so I started investigating. After being on if over a line, I worked out I had to turn notifications on. Okay, so Dallas, if you're sitting out there anywhere on the planet right now thinking, I can't do this, I'm not technical, trust me, I am the technical dunce of the century and we made this work. You don't need to be technical, you just need to have a why that makes you cry. And every time you get frustrated with something, scream at your keyboard if you want. Trust me, I've wanted to throw my computer out the bloody window more than once. But I took a big breath, 
I walked away from my computer and I went out to a window, I went out to the beach, I'm like, why am I doing this again? Okay, I don't want to go back to ships. Why am I doing this again? I want to be free. Why am I doing this again? I want to be free. Why am I doing this again? Because I want to be free and I don't want anyone telling me how to live my goddamn life. And that's why I kept going back to my keyboard every freaking day and I worked shit out. My darlings, my sermon is over. Thank you. God Man. bless. I hope that Fantastic. gives you some value. <laughs> As, and I'm so with you. I mean, it is. I think a lot of Australians, because it's true. When, it, when I think of Australia and whole Australasia online, it's like the gold fields. <laughs> you know, what it would have been like in the gold fields. Like, it's literally not, we haven't even scratched the surface of what we can create here. Okay? And it's when you say that. Territory. Oh my, you know, and when you say that Australia can be like 10 years backwards, I remember meeting an LA rock rock legend poet called Jeanette Napolitano. She used to be in Concrete Blonde. And I remember when I met her, I'll never forget it, I was like 22 and met her after a gig in the Corner Hotel here in Richmond in Melbourne. And she actually said to me, she said to me, Melbourne reminds her of LA in the 50s. This was back... <laughs> Back like in the 90s, you know, and it's like so true. And I think sometimes Australians can come on and think, oh, there's like this whole thing and forget that it's actually can really work in your favour if you are an Australian. And really, I think with the Empower Network, it's even more exciting because you get given a platform. Okay, your blogging platform instantly you've got a way to be able to share your message whatever your dream whatever your message is you can share it and you're actually taught how to do that within our products and training okay but then it gets traffic okay and it's international traffic so you can actually end up building um, a, a business that's all over the world so as an Australian, like for me, I think of, I'm an Australian, yes, but I'm also a global citizen, okay? For me, it makes no difference if someone is in Australia that I'm working with or in America or in France or New Zealand, whether someone's here or all over the other side of the world in Transylvania, <laughs> okay? <laughs> They have access to exactly the same support because we're living in a world online now that has everything available. Okay, there are a few little tips, a few little things that can help you if you're Australian to make sure you're not paying ten dollars a call to ring a US number. There are, and I'm going to certainly share them when it gets to my turn with my story. So hang in there. But I want you to know that it certainly does not have to stop you from being successful. And if anything, Okay, we have an extra advantage because the internet is like 10 years behind here in Australia and, and more and more people are just going to get online and you can be be part of that wave, you know. So, yeah. Erica, your, your story is incredible. Yep. Pardon? Especially with ENV2 coming out. Oh, my oh God. Oh, my God. When ENV2 is going to be grandma, um, we can't even talk too much about it. It's coming. It's going to be huge. I mean, you can just join now, okay? <laughs> just join whoever sent you here because when ENV2 gets released, it literally is going to be nan-friendly people and that means granny-friendly, okay? Just ridiculous. All right. Well, Erica, thank you so much. It's so wonderful to thank have you, you here. I mean, it is like 6 o'clock or something in the morning where you are, so we appreciate your time. Okay. <laughs> You're just doing fabulous work. And next, oh, look, let me introduce you to the next guest speaker. This is Scott Smith from Australia. In fact, he's all the way in WA Perth, which is actually a beautiful part of Australia. I've been there myself. He is a surfer, okay, originally a plumber. Okay, joined in Powers, actually the first thing he's ever, ever done. I had the joy to actually meet him and spend quite a bit of time with Scotty in Denver. And, mate, it was just a delight to actually meet you. And Scotty has really one of the, an amazing story. I, I don't even want to steal his thunder. But what I can tell you is he's been involved online literally, literally just over a year. Okay, and as someone as a 12-year-old veteran, I'm celebrating my 12 years online um, this this month, okay, I have never heard of, of you newbies breaking through the 10K per month or making $100,000 their first year ever, 
Okay, it just never happened. It usually would be a three to five year plan. Well, here in Empower, I've seen it happen not just once, many, many a time. And we actually have Scott Smithy, who actually broke over 100K with his business his very, very first year, even though he's never, ever done anything online before. So if that doesn't go to show you what's possible for newbies, I understand. Scotty is not average. He is not an average man. He's willing to do unaverage activity to get his unaverage results, like everybody here on this panel, and like you if you're listening, okay, and you're watching right now. So be please be sure to see our average earnings. And Scotty, share your story. Share what sort of got you involved in Empower, why you're with Empower. Go on, share your wisdom, my friend. I know everybody will benefit from it too. Uh, well, for starters, I'm shitting myself being on here. <laughs> <I'm nervous. laughs> um... Yeah, I'm kind I'm of, uh, look, there's, there's the shaking hands. <laughs> I'm usually behind a big uh, welding helmet, so you can't see me, so, you know, I haven't got a video face. Um, yeah, look, I, I mean, yeah, as they were saying, I was a, a plumber for 20 years. I left school at um, 14 years old. I mean, from a young age, um, I guess I'm, I'm really blessed to have the parents that did because... Um, they, he, my dad never gave anything to us, even though dad did well. He had quite a lot of um, hardware stores in Melbourne. Um, going back, the old Mitre 10 people in Australia is a hardware chain. Dad um, invested in that and revamped it into the, the colours it is today from the old colours and um, only got out when he got the tip that uh, this big company was coming from the UK. Uh, we've got a big hardware chain now. so. He got out and retired and he'd always, you know, like any kid, you want money for shops and, you know, go down the shops. But uh, Dad said, what are you going to do for me? And for, you know, since I was nine years old, um, he went down to the, the news agents or the paper shop and got me a job um, delivering papers. And, um, you know, from six, seven years old, I was... Um, read, you know, we had our, our kiddie story books and all that, but I was read um, Think and Grow Rich from Napoleon Hill um, and things like that from a young age. So I'm very lucky to have an awesome dad and mum that, um, you know, used to, tack, you know, jump up and down in the supermarket because you didn't get your lollies, but he was like, well, I've worked for it. What are you going to do for me? So... Um, from nine years old, I did a paper round till I was 11, and I'm grumbling, walking around the house, swearing and cussing, and Dad's, you know, what's going on? And he said, I feel, I said to him, I feel like I've been exploited. Um, I'm not getting paid enough, because I was only getting $12 a week, and I was up at 6 o'clock every morning, and I'd do an hour and a half delivering papers, and um, was really ticked off that I wasn't getting paid much. Now, um, Dad said, well, what are you going to do about it? So... Um, got the local paper just for the area and started flicking through and there came out there was a company Handful Distributors and um, I rang them up and they said you're not allowed you're too young and they delivered your catalogues like your big W targets and things like that and so dad went down and said look you know um, give him a shot and um, I'll vouch for him and all that so um, yeah, they gave me uh, one batch, which I think my first one was and for a young boy it was quite exciting it was a Bras and Things catalogue so um, <laughs> if everyone knows, it's just like a lingerie um, company in Australia. So, uh, yeah, I uh, started delivering them. And you got a 1,000 houses in a block, which um, I worked out that would take me three hours for the week. So I'd um, cut down my productive time to one-third of what I'd done. So I was only working three hours a week rather than an hour and a half every day. So I was happy about that. But then when my first check came, they were giving $25 a 1,000 um, uh for a thousand houses that you delivered to, so I was uh, quite quite excited that I'd uh, yeah my productivity had dropped, but I was earning just as much. So I was like, okay, this is this is good. I can do this. Um, then little did I know that uh, they then dumped. You know how you, sometimes you get wherever you are in the world, you get a big bundle of them at one time. So you end up with four or five catalogs. Well. You do that five times twenty-five dollars for an eleven-year-old kid. Um, I was all of a sudden, yeah, rolling in money at that age. You know, back when I was back when I was a kid, you could get a bunch of lollies for a dollar. But um, yeah, it it, uh, it just started the spark in me, and um, you know, I wasn't allowed to spend it all. Dad got me a little kid's bank account and away I went. So that, that's how I started off and always looking for opportunities to make money. But 
when it came to school and things like that, reading, um, communicating and things, yeah, all that sort of stuff. That's why I'm shitting myself sitting here looking at everyone looking at me. But, um, yeah, it, um, I, ne I never was good at uh, anything to do with writing or concentrating because a lot of you know that um, my nickname is, I've uh, been given that by one of the guys in Singapore last year that I met, Curtis Broom, through Dave and Dave. He nicknamed me the Seven Figure Surfer because... While everyone else was busy studying, I was looking outside the window in Melbourne. I grew up in Melbourne, working out which way the wind was blowing to see if it was offshore. And uh, sure enough, if it was blowing from the north, I was gone. Um, I'd jump out the window and, uh, and and run down and get Dad begging to take me down surfing because from four years old, Dad, Dad had surfed. He was one of the first pioneers to um, surf Bells Beach. So, um, yeah, from a young age, I was, you know, in my diapers running up and down the beach um, surfing. So, you know, the teachers at school were never really interested in helping me. And um, from a young age, like, if you've all read Napoleon Hill, if you haven't, I recommend it. If not, jump on YouTube. You can, um, he does his talk. Um, basically, question everything. If you're not sure on something, ask the questions. And teachers don't like that if you ask them over and over again, why, why, why. So... Um, always inquisitive, always things like that. But uh, a few of them did say at about 13 years old, look, you, you're not going to be anything your whole life. You're too, you're too infatuated with surfing. You're not interested. You're not, you're not basically not smart enough. So um, I sort of was like, well, who are you to f and tell me that you know I'm not interested? And you know, he said, well, you're, one of them said you're either going to be a pro surfer or you're going to be on the unemployment. Um, down the coast surfing and I sort of sat there and went, it's kind of not a bad option but, you know, I didn't want to have no money and I've seen my dad work from nothing, had, you know, nothing and, and became a self-made um, success story and, yeah, so at 14 years old I was just really sick of being told that I was going to be nothing my whole life but in education-wise, yeah, I couldn't read properly, I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, yeah, maths, you know, I can't even work out a frigging calculator still. You know, but the thing was that I just went, you know, stuff this. And um, my brother is um, working for a mechanical um, air conditioning company. So I got an apprenticeship just after I was in, in Australia at the time. You could start work full time at 14. So away I went. And um, from 14 to 18, I was an apprentice and uh, traveling the world surfing. I used to get. Uh, product sponsorship and all that from um, Quicksilver. So I used to travel the world in the junior comps and, yeah, just doing my plumbing, Did my, got qualified at 18 and started, yeah, saved up a lot of money. Now, you can think of a kid that wasn't allowed to spend his money, been saving up since he was 11 years old. Um, yeah, I bought my first house just after I turned 18 and, and you know, everything was looking great and surfing the world, um, looking at signing a contract, coming up to 21 years old and then um, got the worst news someone could pretty much get and, um, yeah, got told that I didn't get told the, the whole extent but I'd been diagnosed with leukaemia, um, acute lymphatic leukaemia and, um, yeah, like, you know, all of a sudden... It is like someone, if anyone's ever been punched in the head, well, it kind of feels like that. You just go numb and, and you don't know how to react. And, you know, I, I sat there and the lead, I just remember the day I was sitting on the couch and Dad answered the phone and they were, well, you know, he's like, well, what can we do? And he's like, right, well, I'm coming to see you. Um, or, you know, and all of a sudden you sort of just go, you know what's going to be told and you've got it. And, um, Dad went and saw them and he, he just said for me to stay at home and uh, my brother took me down for a surf. We were all at home when we got told and um, he took me for a surf and little to me, Dad had gone into the hospital and with Mum and, and they said, look, you know, um, we don't know how he's been going so well for so long um, not feeling sick but I was really fit and kept myself healthy and um, they told Dad that there's nothing we can really do that he's got like three months if he's if he's lucky. Um, we don't want to put him through anything, just take him home and let him just in, enjoy the time he's got left. And, um, yeah, uh, Dad, being Dad, you know, surfer boy and that, and he said, look, you know, and he never meant it seriously, but he said if anyone tells my son that he's going to, He's got three three months or he's going to die. He said, I'll personally come in here and I'll blow the hospital up and I'll shoot everyone if you try to run away. 
And they said, well, look, you know, you're going to put him through three months of hell. Why would you do that? And he said, you don't understand my son. You don't understand what our family is about. There is, there is no, there is no fire. There is no failure in life. It's only setbacks. And so a couple of days later in we went and um, they just got started with the treatment and there was a few times that they got my parents and my family in. They flew from all over the world to say goodbye because um, I was strapped up to to respirators and things just to keep me going. And, um, yeah, Dad said one night um, I was in a coma and he, he held my hand and started screaming well, – screaming at me going, you asshole, you can't leave, you, you're disrespecting your father and, you know, everything you've worked for and, um, yeah, they all went out to, you know, sit in the room and just wait to be told that I was gone and uh, the nurse came running in to dad and said, you won't believe this, um, come in and I was sitting up in bed and um, putting a, they had a little model car and I was trying to put it together, I've still got it but it's like the worst put together car you've ever seen in your life because I was out of it, but um, yeah, like it, it, it just went to show that there was 12 other guys who started at the same time, some were not as, I was the worst case diagnosed, and I'm still in the medical books in Australia as, as a scratch on the head really how I pulled it off, but I'm the only one left standing and I put it all down to, um, it didn't matter what happened or what Dad did, Dad had all the surfing magazines send me um, subscriptions. I had Kelly Slater. I had all my friends come in to visit me, and I never once for a second, all I could see was, okay, I've got three and a half years. Well, they told me two and a half years of treatment, and in their heads they're like, well, this is just cruel. And, um, okay, cool, so I can go surfing after I'm done. And that's when the doctor, the oncologist realised that, holy shit, you know, this kid's... Uh, all I, all I really saw was the end result, that I didn't care what I had to do. It was only two and a half years out of my life, ended up being three and a half, but I saw the end result of me being back in the water and if you can, sorry, if you can just envision the end result, it doesn't matter how the fuck you get there, excuse my language, sorry, you're dealing with the plumber, um, it doesn't matter how you get there, I mean, you... All I saw was I was surfing that water over my face. Now, if you can close your eyes, and I've done this, and this is why I'm at the crest of just going huge, like, is the fact that if you can close your eyes and see yourself on stage, if you can close your eyes and, and see the end result, don't worry about the nitty-gritty, don't worry about the crappy SEO, don't worry about it, just see the end result and everything will fall into place. And I'm alive because my dad and my mum never doubted the, the belief that I had in determination that you can have and everyone's got in them and no matter what the setback is, you, you'll have bad days. I still have bad days where I just, you know, life can be hard, you know, and after, after being better and, and um, with leukaemia, I, I jumped on a plane and moved up to Queensland and just surfed non-stop. I missed my window to be a pro surfer but at the end of the day, it put me on a, on a path that, Every little setback puts you where you're meant to be going and if you're not heading in the right direction, that's what setbacks are for. So, um, yeah, went back into plumbing, just working my ass off like everyone does, 60-hour weeks to move to WA um, from Queensland um, to, to run a huge hospital over here and uh, injured my shoulder and uh, all of a sudden, you know, the one thing that you rely on, like I mean, everyone can relate, you've got a qualification, you got to ask yourself what happens if that that fell through, and they were like, "Well, you know, if this shoulder operation doesn't go right, you may never uh, be able to work with your arm above your head again." So, off I went, and started searching on the internet, just playing around. I can't even remember what I typed in, and I popped this um, guy in America, and it was the original Empower Network video, the twenty-five buck one that uh, <laughs> everyone sort of just loved, and we all missed dearly, and. Um, yeah, got started, and I'll just show you, um, just to show you my computer skills. This is the uh, computer I tell everyone about. Um, it doesn't even, you can see the splits. It's broken. I don't know, can everyone see that? But it doesn't even stay, see, it doesn't even stay open. Like, it's an older zoo, so I've got to hand me down. And I never even, like, <laughs> like Alex, I never had, I had a Facebook and, and, and Skype, and that was pretty much it. And... This is uh, no word of a lie. It was about three or four weeks into working in Power Network, which tomorrow is actually ticks over a year for me, the 16th of August. And um, 
someone said, oh, can you forward me the email? And I was like, what do you mean? And they're like, can you forward me the email you just got? And I'm like, yeah, what do you, I don't get it. I'll send you the email, yeah? And they're like, no, you can forward it. And I'm like, oh, well, yeah, okay. So all I used to do is I'd get an email, I'd copy and paste it and then hit new email and then paste it and send it. I didn't know you could actually forward an email. So um, that was the kind of computer skills I had. And look, yeah, no, I'm good with a welding rod. But the thing is that I, I could see a way of this working. And look, my start, and a lot of people don't know about it, is that... Um, you know, Dave and Dave got kept me going, but I had my first experience with someone was a guy inside um, who's no longer with the company, thanks to Dave and Dave, actually uh, ripped about 30 people off in his team, got money out of us. I ended up losing five and a half grand, and um, my first experience is we all got ripped off and, and scammed out of it, but I had a call from um, Dave Wood and um, we were trying to work out what was going on and he ended up letting us all into the products for free and this guy had set it up just to basically um, fleece people out of their money. So if you ever wanted to know the, um, the the character of Dave and Dave, I met them in Singapore and, and for them to do what they did and the way they treated me in Singapore was like, you know, I'd known them since we were six years old. But um, my first experience of even online was a bad one but... I could just see the sincerity in their eyes that, you know, I met them in Singapore and I met Erica in um, San Diego and I was just wandering around like a lost puppy and she came, you know, heard my accent and she said, oh, come and sit with us and, you know, I'd only been in a few weeks and um, I'd hit, I got to the top 100. Now, the way I did it was, um, you know, taboo with this company but um, one of the guys mentioned in the inner circle um, that's my favourite product is you just listen to them and you pick up little bits and you make notes like I've made notes with everyone that everyone said little bits and that reminds you of stuff and um, my uh, yeah picked up the audio of Dave Wood talking about the guy handing out um, hooker cards or stripper cards at, in um, Vegas so I heard a little thing about um, phone leads so I started searching online and couldn't work it out and I found some um, in Australia and I think it was my first month. Yeah, I landed up in the top 100 for San Diego in my first uh, four weeks, and that was when the contest was. The points went to the person above you, as well. So, yeah, um, the guy finally got removed, and um, and uh, yeah, Dave and Dave just sort of mentored me, and then I was with Erica, and I met a, a lot of different people. So I'm kind of an orphan. I never really had any help from the start until I got to San Diego. So. Um, this all it is is just listening to the the products, listening to the audios, and don't deviate off off it at all. Like um, Tam was saying, it's just listening to the products, listening to everything, not not going, oh, I, you know, I can do this better. Because if you try to reinvent the wheel, you know, it's not going to work. So that's all it is is just listening. And I picked up little bits here and there, and getting to the events. Now, if I hadn't gone to San Diego. Um, which I wasn't going to because I was quite disgruntled with what had happened, but they said, come over. Um, if I hadn't gone there, I wouldn't have met the guys in Singapore and I wouldn't have been invited to Singapore where I wouldn't have ended up just being, you know, being given the uh, the VIP treatment from the Daves and um, meeting the people I met there. And now, because of all these meetings and all that sort of stuff, is, is where I am today from nothing. Now, yeah, as we said, my average, my earnings aren't uh, average, but I mean, I don't know still how it worked, and I still, well, just before this, was starting to worry that I couldn't even get Google, Google Plus to work. <laughs> so, um, you know, it, you know, it just tipped over 100 and I think 100 and something grand, but it's it's just let's say 100 grand round figure, but um, just sticking to the to the program. Don't try well to done. don't try to. Um, yeah, just listen to the products and yep. if you're like, oh, you know, in a circle, if you're not listening to one a day, then you're cheating yourself. Hmm. If you're not blogging for the first 90 days once a day, you're cheating yourself. If you're not doing videos, you know, even if it's not a view of it, it's just you talking with, I don't know, the surf in the background, you know, you're cheating yourself. You know, hmm. the eight core commitments, they're there for a reason and a lot of people, I, especially in my team, will go, oh, did you listen to an audio today? They go, oh, yeah, oh, which one? Uh, 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 um, uh. <laughs> you know, I've got every single one of the um, of the inner circles on my iPhone. I've got a playlist. 
and it's on as soon as I get out of bed. You know, when I'm up early, I go for surfs and I do work early hours because of the US. It's getting stuff set up, but. Um, yeah, I don't know if I've waffled on too much, but you know, no, doesn't matter. Amazing. Doesn't matter how you get there. Doesn't matter what your end result is. It it is like Eric said. It's your why. You how I love mm. that why makes you cry. And and you know, my why is the fact that you know, few people have seen it. I've always dreamed of having a wave machine in my backyard, and I'm buying a property not far from here. And I'm going to give all my time and three quarters of my earnings to the Make-A-Wish. You know, um, I spend a lot of time helping out and things like that, but at the moment, because of the financial difficulties around the world, they're not being able to grant kids their every wish. And, you know, like I don't need a huge amount of money to to survive, and, and these kids need to have a bit of happiness inside their, li inside their lives while they battle uh, hard, you know, they're battling the mm. demons, they're fighting the devil head on, and... You know, I want to be something that can. I can't help physically, but I can help financially, and that's my why is to be able to bring smiles to people's faces and and getting people emailing you saying that you know you're you know you, you made me a thousand bucks and I'm like I didn't do anything, man. Like I don't know how to use a computer still. How would I do it? You <laughs> followed the system. Yeah. And and don't 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 change don't change anything. Get all the products. You know, get them all because. And don't go from one, this is the big trick, don't go from one to the other watching all of them. If you want to be good at blogging, watch the sections of each product in the blogging and it all comes together. If you yep. want to be good at copyright, then go through and watch, listen to the audios that are copywriting. A good one, take notes everyone. January 2012, thanks to Erica, she told me this one. Um, David Wood's um, oh, yeah, uh, sorry, oh, David brilliant. Sharp's audio David on copyright. Sharp's. Now, if you haven't listened to that yet, um, it's in January 2012. It says in the David, inner circle. Yeah, the inner circle. Sorry, yeah, David, in David circle. Sharp's audio. That changed everything for me. So, um, if you want and to the hypnotic language is brilliant too. The hypnotic language, because I've been re going yeah. through that one. That was um, before that. I think it was in October last year. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Mm. Yeah, you know. That's so true. if you want to be <laughs> If you want to do blogging, you go through each product and follow the blogging videos. Don't go from the blogging to the copyright to this to that because you're just going to go over it. And with the SEO, one thing Dave Sharp said to me, he put my arm, arm around me walking down through Singapore shots and he said, mate, the one thing is that people struggle with and, and all of a sudden like me, if I spent all my time worrying about the coding and HTML of SEO, mm. you'd, go, you'd go nuts. Forget all that and just learn how to write good copy. That's it. That's all. And uh, everything else falls in place. So if you've got your why, if you've got your end result, forget how you're getting there. It'll happen. Oh, fantastic, Scott. I mean, that yeah. is such brilliant advice because, you know, it was funny because just yesterday I asked, well, what, what exactly do you do with the Empower Network? Like if you were to put it down into just one little sentence, what what is it that we do? You know, what do you do every day? And realised that if I had to really nail it down to just one little sentence, I'd say, all I do is create content and share it. <laughs> yes, That's people basically, the video. Exactly. All we do is create content. What's create content? It could be a blog post, shoot a video, you know. You could be writing an article that you put on your blog or whatever it may be. It's just some sort of content. And, Scott, you saying that, you know, to avoid the overwhelm and, and not to try and focus on mastering everything all at once because that's just totally impossible and just to focus on one thing at a time is key you know <clears throat> and I think that's what also sets the Empower Network apart when it comes to its training is with the eight core commitments like if you haven't joined us yet when you join okay you're going to be exposed to eight fast start lessons and those fast start lessons that you'll go through basically have the secret of what it takes to create a six, seven figure income online if you do them every day or if you follow the principles that are there. And then our products, I mean usually you join a company, you might be given a little bit of marketing information or what have you, okay, but then if you want to learn how to market or want to have access to, you know, the personal development which is so key, everybody here on this panel, anybody succeeding at anything, invest in their personal growth. Okay, listens to audio daily, reads daily, attends seminars, goes to live events. Okay, you'd often have to spend literally hundreds, if not thousands, of dollars buying that education on top, however many thousands of dollars you, you had to invest to start the business. Whereas the Empower Network has literally everything under one roof. 
okay, just <laughs> all under one roof with literally training by those that are making it happen online now. So we, we can have people that come in as a customer, already have a business, be it offline or online, and they use the education in our products to help them be more successful doing what they're doing, okay? Okay, that's going to use it just purely for that purpose. But we have others, of course, use the information to help them be successful as they build their Empower Network business. So the key is to take it step by step. So you've got like, that's what the 15K formula is all about. It literally has step by step what to learn first and what to go through. I mean, the first five videos in that walk you through how to get results for free. It teaches you how to get clarity on your why. Because when Erica said, if your why, if your why doesn't make you cry, well, if your why doesn't make you cry, then your why is not big enough, okay? <laughs> That's why your why needs to make you cry. But a lot of people don't, they might, I oh, wouldn't mind making some extra money, okay? Oh, I wouldn't mind trying one of these things because I'd like to pay the car bill. But no offence, that's not going to make you cry, okay? <laughs> you know, that's not a deep enough why. But if you ask, well, what, why, what will that do for you? If you go through, if you're already in Empower and you go into Lesson 1 in your 15K formula and you take the time to let David walk you through how to create an intent, <clears throat> how to get clarity and how to create a 90-day plan, you are going to be able to discover the why that makes you cry, which is big enough. Because once you have that why, okay, and like um, Scott was saying earlier that you've got to imagine it, okay, the reason really, like Scott, it's an incredible story, what you've gone through, what you've overcome in your life, it, it just shows the power of imagination as well, of how what you can imagine, even though it seems impossible, really, what, what should have, you, you know, medicals, would, look, really the power of words is so much. You can use words for such great good. You can use words to destroy people, frankly. Okay? And I'm a bit with your father, Scott. I won't want anyone telling my kids or anyone I care about that they can't do anything or they can't do that or this is going to happen to them negative or this is going to happen to them negative at all. Because what you say to yourself and what you believe and what you imagine is what you're going to bring into your life. So when you have those setbacks like Scott have, and I know so many of us have, <clears throat> if you can imagine your why there as if it's already happening right now, as if it's already real, okay? It's only a matter of time before you bring it into your life, okay? Before you actually manifest it into your life. And when you have your why as clear as that in your brain, then as you go through the how-to, the rest of the videos that teach you how to master blogging and teach you how to do video marketing and teach you how to do whatever, learn whatever skill you need to want to learn one by one, you'll actually be able to create whatever level of success you want in your business. And not in 10 years and not in 20 years, okay, but really quickly in relative terms, you know, within, within your first year or even six to nine months, like I've seen a lot of people do it here. Now, speaking of people being successful here, <laughs> Who we're seeing here on the screen is Rita, okay. Rita's up there in Sydney. I've actually had the pleasure of working with Rita for quite some time. She She's on this panel because she's on fire, really you are, okay. You recently had, you know, an over 4,500 day. You're having a great month this month. You're setting a fabulous pace for your team. You're a wonderful mentor for your team and you have a very unique story as well and um, Rita can be a bit shy, okay, <laughs> but I tell you, when you get to know this woman, you're just going to fall in love with her too because I love you, darling. So why don't you share with the world a little bit about you, what got you into Empower and what you're doing, sweetheart, because you're a star. Thanks, Christina. <laughs> <coughs> you go. Okay. I hope that everyone can hear me. Yeah? Yeah. Yep, okay. Yep. Well, Scott, I have to tell you, I you you brought me to tears with your story, you know, and listening to everyone on the panel, what I came to realise was that we've all been through some struggle and we've gotten through it. And I think that's what creates our why. You know, we're we're determined. We're not gonna let anything hold us down, 
We're not going to let anything beat us. And it's something I've always taught my daughter. She's 21. I say, we don't give up in this family. There's no way you're going to give up. And she's currently actually doing her thesis at university and she needs um, overweight people for you know to go in and help her do her experiment. And she's running out of time and she hasn't got enough people. So she was standing at university yesterday handing out flyers, but in order not to discriminate, she had to hand them to everybody. And she said, talk about you know <laughs> losing your dignity. I said, you've got to do what you've got to do. You're not going to give up. You're going to get, you know, she needs 10 more people. Unfortunately, I'm too old. Otherwise, I would participate for her. But, you know, teaching those things and, and what we're doing here is um, showing our children, you know, those of us that have children, that you can do anything you put your mind to. And I wanted to share my story with you. I'm a pharmacist. And, you know, many years of study, etc. and I had a good job and things were going along beautifully for us. And in 1992, when after my daughter was born, she was 10 weeks old, um, I crushed a disc in my spine. And I was actually on my way to work and I had the baby in my hands. I was sitting at my mum's and I said, okay, mum, you know, you can look after the baby now. I'm off to work. And I stood up from the couch and I felt something going my back. And I just stood there holding the baby and I said, Mum, grab the baby. And, you know, she didn't know what it had. She just looked at me and said, what? What are you talking about? Put it down. I said, no, come and grab the baby. And it's amazing, you know, a mother will never do anything to harm her child, you know. And I stood there in excruciating pain. She grabbed the baby and I fell to the floor. And I was on the floor for five days. I could not move. I could not move. I could barely even move my head. And that was the lowest point in my life. I, I couldn't see beyond that point in my life. After five days, I got up, ended up in bed. The years after that were shocking. Um, they were terrible, not only because of the bad pain, but here we are, we lost you know, one significant income. We had a new baby. We had medical bills. I was having physio two, three times a week, and that's not cheap. And your health health fund cuts out after a while. Um, and you know, over the years, because I wasn't mobile, I put on a lot of weight, which made my condition worse. Um, and it wasn't fair. It was very hard on my husband too, because not only did he have to support us financially, but poor guy would come home from work and have to do the housework because I couldn't do it, you know. He would have to lift up the baby. I couldn't do it. Um, and when my condition deteriorated to the point that I couldn't drive down the road, I couldn't get out of the house at all, I was completely housebound, I was living with 24-hour pain and the drugs stopped working, you know, the drugs would just take the edge off. And when you wake up in the morning, and you start crying, the first thing you do is cry from the pain, you know you've got to do something more. And Christina can relate to me with that. Um, I went and saw the surgeons in 98 and the doctor said to me, the disc fragments have moved so much that if you, I had an MRI done on my back, if you don't have surgery immediately, you are high risk of being paralysed from the waist down. The fragments were pushing the spinal cord that much that there was hardly anything getting through. I was so scared to have spinal surgery. I was so scared, but I had no option. I had to do it, you know. When they say, you're going to be paralysed, you're going to be in a wheelchair, I thought, oh gosh, you know, no way. They got me in the next week. I didn't have time to think about it. It was less than a week. I saw them Thursday, Friday, Tuesday I was having surgery. And the surgery was, you know, it was partially successful. Um, I'm, I'm not in that 27, uh, you know, 24 seven pain that I was before. Um, however, it has left my leg, left leg numb to a certain degree. I have to be careful. I can't overdo it. You know, I can't go and do gardening or anything like that. I can't vacuum. You know, I haven't vacuumed or changed sheets for 21 years. God love my husband. Me too, sweetie. <laughs> But, yeah, you just can't. You, you can't take the risks with doing things like that. And 
there was no way I could go back to work. It soon hit home, you cannot work as a pharmacist because we stand behind a computer all day long. It's an eight hour job where you're standing in front of a computer and walking around the shop. So I needed to do something else. There was no way that I could continue on this path. I needed to do something else. So what did I do? I did what a lot of people do and I hopped onto Google and looked for you know, make money from home <laughs> and I did this with no internet skills, believe me, all I could do was search a recipe, you know, work from home business etc. Um, and I found something in the wellness industry which I thought was pretty good, you know, they had good products etc and I could do it completely from home so I went forward with it because, you know, as a young family, my daughter was only 10 at the time, we still wanted to do things in life. We want you know, we want, our dream was to build a beautiful home. I wanted to put her in private schools. I wanted the piano. I wanted all those things. I, I still wanted everything and I was going to find a way to do it. And after working for hours and hours a day, for years with this company, I sponsored hundreds of people. I lost count of how many hundreds of people I brought into the company. I looked and working eight hours a day, sometimes up to 11 o'clock at night on the phone, I looked at my check and it was like $2,000 a month for all that effort. I couldn't believe it. I thought, no, there's got to be a better way. There's got to be a better way. My computer skills were a little bit better at this point, but still not good. I mean, we used to get our business reports sent to us via email. This is how, how bad I was and I'm not that much better now. <laughs> But we used to get our business reports sent via email as an attachment and I opened it up and the writing was really little, I couldn't see it and I thought, oh, this is no good. So I emailed them back and I said, can you resend that business report but make the writing bigger? And I told someone in my team and he said, oh my gosh, you didn't email that to them, did you? This is one of my downline, you know, Terry. And I said, yeah. He said, oh, you just have to zoom it. And I went, oh, how do you do that? <laughs> he said, oh, I can hear them laughing at you. He goes, I can hear head office laughing at you. I said, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. That's something new I've learned, you know. But that goes to show you don't have to be an internet guru. And even to this day, I mean, you know, I've learned some things, but my skills are still limited. But I knew there had to be a better way. You, you know, you shouldn't have to work eight hours a day on the phone continuously. I kept searching, I kept searching, I kept trying. I was not going to give up. I was going to find something. I was going to find a home on the internet where what I did was going to produce the results that I wanted. And through the years, I tried many different things. A lot of them made money for me. A lot of them didn't. You know, I don't think there's many people online that are successful that have not lost some money along the way. It's a learning curve. And in my searches, um, you know, I came across Christina and I rang her up and we instantly connected. And we, sh you know, we, we have, both of us have shocking backs and we shared our stories and the rest is history. We've been together now for a few years. Um, and, you know, last year, Christina joined Empower Network and more or less said to me, look, you know, we're joining this thing, <laughs> do it, just do it. <laughs> I said, okay. So I joined, I got all in, um, but I have to say I wasn't focused. I was doing something else at the time. I wasn't focused. I wasn't listening to the inner circle like Scott said, which is so important. Um, my focus was all, the, you know, I, was, I had a few eggs in the basket, which is not a good thing like, like Erica demonstrated. And I was just doing Empower Network one to two hours a week and at the end of a few months I thought, hey, this is, this is actually producing some money, you know. Let's switch focus. So at the end of last year I dropped everything else. In January of this year I focused on Empower Network. I committed and in the next month I earned over $9,000. That's in February of this year. Now, so again, like team. everyone said, income disclosures, you know, <laughs> the average income disclosures below.
but as you can see, you know, there's not a lot of average. No one's average, really. Who's average mm. these days? Everyone has a why. Everyone has a story. And it was funny because it was Valentine. I remember it clearly. It was Valentine's Day, which happens to be my husband's birthday. And I was baking a cake with my daughter. And Christina rang me on the mobile and she said, you've just earned $3,000. I said, what? <laughs> I went on my emails and there it was. You have just earned $3,000. I went, wow, thanks for letting me know. Went back into the kitchen and... Um, I said to my daughter, guess what? I just earned three thousand dollars. She said, Doing what? <laughs> because she had seen me when she was little, she was ten, on the phone all day, all night, working, and you know, the income I was generating was really very small, you know, two thousand dollars a month, if that some months. So she was quite surprised. And I've just gone forward since that that time. I mean, I had a four and a half thousand dollar day this week on Monday. Again, see the income disclosures below. <laughs> but you know, Empower Network has done so much for me. Money aside, what it has done, it has given me back. When you when you are at home with a disability, um, and you can't contribute to your family. I almost felt like a burden to my family because here I was like a lump at home. I couldn't do the housework, you know, I couldn't contribute financially. Um, I really wanted to help out and this was my way, something I could do for my family. So it's given that back to me and, and a bit of dignity as well. And you know, I don't have to worry about my husband doing the housework anymore. We have a cleaner that does that. And sure, I don't do the housework, but you know what? I earn the money to pay for that cleaner. So I feel good about not having, not being able to do the housework. And, you know, we have achieved our dream. We built a beautiful home thanks to the internet. The internet, you know, in a way I look back at my back injury and I think it was meant to be. You know, when life gives you lemons, as they say, you make lemonade and and I just needed the recipe. I just needed the recipe for lemonade and I was going to make lemonade. Nothing was going to hold me down. There's no way I'm going to just sit there and take it. Like Christina, she said, no way I'm going to be on disability. What's that? You know, you, you make your own life, I think, you know, that's what it's all about. And I love Empower Network because I call it a business in a box. <laughs> it's got everything. I wish I had joined a business like this when I first got started online because everything's there. The tools are there. The training is there. Not just training on how to market your business and how to grow it and the skills you need, but also the personal development and things that you can take into your life as well. Um, but the thing I love the most is the support. The support system online is unbelievable. Not only the support system from your upline, from you know, I don't just get support from Christina, who's my sponsor, but I get support from America and from Scott and from Tam and so many other people within the company that have no financial interest to help me succeed. I have never seen that in any other company, never. And Power Network is one team, as far as I'm concerned. We work together. That you know, it's one team. Everyone helps each other. Yeah, one fantastic. family. Absolutely. Mm. So you know, it doesn't matter where you are. Don't give up. Give it a go. Embrace it. Join us. You know, be part of this huge team and <laughs> move forward. The the one thing I I learned in my first business, you know, where because like I had to call leads and you had to learn how to believe. And I still carry that through, and it's funny, Christina, that you put that up in the in the beginning. Because All for believing. Most, oh. most important thing. It doesn't matter how good you are on the computer, whether you can send emails. No matter any of that, if you believe, you will do it. And that's what I was taught. You know, believe in four things. Believe in the company. Well, you know, this company, they are going from strength to strength. They are like a bulldozer. They are unstoppable. You know, it's amazing. The products, believe in the products, well, 
they're the best in the industry. I, I mm. believe they are absolutely the best in the industry. You don't need anything else but these mm. products. I've got it all there. Believe in your team. That's another thing I was taught. And we've got the best team on earth. You know, not just our team but the whole Empower team. Mm. They unite. Like on our Facebook group, we've got people that are not in our team. Mm. You know, we've got Tammy, men, Scott and Erica, you know, <laughs> people from all over welcome. the place. Everyone. Mm. Everyone's mm. together. But most importantly, you've got to believe in yourself. And if you've got that strong why that Erica was talking about, like all of us here on this panel, you will make it. You've, you've just got to have that strong why and just go for it. That's what I think. Go for it and do it and don't stop yep. till it works. <laughs> yep. Have the until attitude. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me so much, Christina. And it was so good to listen to everyone's story. You know, it, it, um, the internet's amazing. It can just bring the whole world together. I love it. It's the first time yep. on... Want to hang out for me too, Scott? So I was just as nervous <laughs> as you. <laughs> oh, shit, myself. I've got my little notes here and everything. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had a chance to check the comments. It'll be interesting to see. Where we look, I mean, I guess what's gorgeous about this is not very often that we have an all Australasian panel, and, and just to hear like all the stories from so many different backgrounds and so many different experiences, you know, it really just goes to show that it really doesn't matter who you are. Okay. You, you can make it happen too. It doesn't matter what sort of situation you're in. You, you can take yourself out of it and use Empower Network as a vehicle to take you there. And, and you know, just to end this, um, you've heard little bits about my story here and some of you already know my story and I just want to share a little bit of my story with you, not the whole thing. I would be here for two hours. <laughs> okay. But in a nutshell, I just want to share with you what got me got me into Empower and, and Rita mm -hmm. sort of shared that, yes, is it possible if I could jump in right here? Maybe you give anyone a can, proper introduction. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> Ooh, I'm so, getting introduced. <laughs> Go for it. Just so you know, um, you know, just so, um, just just so everyone can really uh, understand, and and so you know, so that when you speak, you know, you you get the attention you actually deserve, Christina. And I know a lot of people uh, watching right now. Mm, you know, I hear because Christina uh, has invited you here, and uh, you know, I've invited you here. Scott has invited you here. Chris, uh, Rita, or Erica has invited you here. Most of you have already uh, known who um, who um, uh, I'm just going blank. Christina, I mean, I'm I'm just like Scott. I'm getting this nerve, right? But um, let's let's just say that this nerve is not a nerve. It's it's excitement, really. It's excitement, and I'm just getting ready to introduce Christina. That's why I'm so excited because when I when I uh, when I joined Empower, my first event was Austin, right? And I went there, and uh, I didn't know anybody there, right? And I'm just uh, I'm just a new guy, and uh, I see people, you know, uh, chatting away in their corner. Those people chatting away in their corner, and you know, everyone's just like loud and rah and rah. And I'm just a guy just walking into a place, you know, that um, that is unknown to me. And um, I didn't know what to expect at this event, but I knew, like like Erica, I knew that I had to go to this event in, in order to change my life because I've been on internet marketing, um, you know, uh, four years prior. And one other thing that I refused to do was take myself to go to an event, right? And I thought, hey, I'm going to do something different because, uh, you know, as you all know, the uh, the definition of doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result, is co-insanity. And so I, I really take heed to that, and I, I thought, I'm going to try something different, right? And so I listened to, to, to what the system tells me, uh, listening to the eight core commitments, and um, one of the eight core commitments was get yourself to an event, right? So I did that. I went to the event, and like I said, don't know anybody there. And you know, I'm looking around. I'm really trying to find something that can give me, uh, a, you know, that 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 could, you know, lit up this fire inside of me that can help me su succeed. And along with that, I'm looking for some sort of belief, right? And during this event, um, this one lady, right? popped up on the screen and her name was Christina Munoz and I've never heard of Christina until that point 
and here I see this really energetic lady, you know, she's getting to choose, There's, there was a check coming out onto stage, I think at that point it was about uh, over $50,000, right? And I'm just like, wow, and uh, who's this lady? And then when she introduced herself, she said she was from Australia, and immediately at that point my belief just went pew, right up, right? And, and I knew that here's a lady from, from Australia that is making money with this company, uh, and she's making money on the internet, so I can do it as well, right? And I have, uh, you know, followed Katrina ever since, and I've seen her sort of growing and growing, and she's been helping so many people achieve success as well. And and uh, time and time again, um, you know, I hear her saying, look, I'm going to get to an event, and I'll meet you guys there, and I've always been waiting to meet Christina, and come Chicago, uh, you know, I was looking around for Christina, she couldn't make it there, maybe she can share a, a little bit about that, and then come Denver, I'm expecting to see Christina again, but I didn't expect to see this, right? I was expecting to see her sort of in her wheelchair, maybe, you know, uh, scrolling around, but when I first saw her, right, she was actually standing and speaking and, you know, and I was like, what? You know, who's this lady, right? She's actually standing and, and you know, immediately I went and uh, had to, like, say hello and, and hug her and everything like that because she's been a huge part of my success and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just... Uh, so honored right now to introduce Christina within, guys, everybody listen to this, within the first 18 months in this, um, in this, uh, this company, she's made, and uh, it's funny because I, I, I sent a post out this morning that she's made in 18 months, months. Uh, in 16 <laughs> months, sorry, um, 250 something, $58,000. Ninety. Ninety. I've got to be crazy and then, since Denver. <laughs> and, then, and then she messaged me to Facebook. Beast mode activated. Tell you all about beast mode soon. Facebook and she's like, look, Tam, here's an update. I've made $290,000 as of today. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. And, you know, she's a gift to Australia. She's a gift to everybody who's listening in right now. Guys, so I want you to just, you know, take out pen and pads and listen to her story. Christina, we have... For me, I have all, all, all day here, and I, if anybody you know, want to go off and do something else, go ahead and, and, and log out, but I really want to hear your full story, so go ahead, start from the beginning, and uh, let us sh share with us you know, how, you know, what kind of struggle you went through and how you're able to get yourself here today and uh, where you're going, so go ahead. Thank you, Tam. Wow, that was an introduction and a half, wasn't it? <laughs> thank you. I, I did not. I was not aware that you were in Austin and and you had that experience. So thank you so much for letting me know. It was just a delight to get to meet you in Denver. And I and I think you know what gives me a thrill. You know, I just love it when I see the Aussies and and just any and any just sort of Aussies making it happen. It just gives me a kick because I know that it's possible for everyone. And I know like Erica got herself in the top 10 um, past uh, seven days income earners this this past week. It was just wonderful. And Rita's on fire and Scott's on fire and everybody's on fire. But I think when it comes to my story, and I don't know about taking it from the beginning because other, and we're already going to, too long, but what I do want to share with you is that it's a little bit similar to Rita's. So I really connect with Rita. We have a very, very similar story though. I've had two surgeries. <laughs> Okay, but what basically got me online, it was a similar thing. I was like 33 years old and um, I injured all my lower discs in a work-related incident. And what it basically meant is that I couldn't sit, stand or walk for an extended period of time anymore. Like um, if I tried to go back to work, I could last nine to five, maybe two, three days, but then my disc will hit my nerve and I'll collapse on the floor and then I'll be in a month of acute pain until I recover enough to try again. And that cycle sort of went over the first year over and over and over again. I tried to return to work eight times, went to rehab, and no matter what I did, <coughs> I couldn't do it. I could not sit, stand or walk nine to five. And it happened when I was 33, I'll never forget, it was June when I was 33. And then the next year, June, when I was 34, okay, I got a report in the mail. <coughs> from a surgeon and he basically said that my symptoms are bizarre and florid and I just didn't want to work anymore okay so I can relate to when you're told something horrible that is not true you know I can relate to it as a child as well Scott I had teachers tell me I'll, I'll, I'll amount to nothing you know 
you know, I, I know because I was different and would talk back and all that kind of thing. I get that. I've had that throughout my entire life as well. And unfortunately, I've experienced it a number of times in the medical profession as well. And that first time it was there. And that was sort of my moment. That sort of filled me with a rage unlike I have ever, ever felt before. And I just decided, no, you know, I, I, this is not going to be the rest of my life. Because next thing I knew, I was on sickness benefits. I was 34, living on sickness benefits. At that time, it was just my partner and I. And we wanted to start a family. We wanted to move to the country. You know, I had dreams. I didn't want to be on sickness, sickness benefits for the rest of my life. Ah, what am I going to do, you know? So a few months later, I was looking for work from home, a bit like Rita, because I knew I had to find something that I could do from home, okay, and uh, started with an MLM company. Now, I actually spent five years building with that MLM, so I more than understand where Rita's coming from, where she's literally built a team in hundreds and hundreds and if not thousands of people and earned very little, okay. Now, this is very important because there's going to be some people now watching this who have experience, okay. You've built teams before in other things, okay? So you're more than comfortable with understanding that often you need literally hundreds if not thousands to make the big money. Now, I'm going to reveal something to you that's happened here with me and Empower in comparison to what I had to build my first five years in MLM because my first five years in MLM, I don't even know how many people I recruited. It was hundreds and hundreds and I literally had to have an organisation in the thousands I worked 14, 16 hour days from a mattress on the floor because the stress of what it took to build my MLM had me in and out of acute pain for those five years. And because I was in and out of acute pain those five years because what it took to qualify for my commissions and what it took to qualify to set the pace for my team, you know, to be able to get to the events, I was never able to get to any of the events of that company either. It was one of the dinosaurs, one of the big guns. So it changed my life, so I'm forever grateful. But that was just the reality of MLM at what it was. And I often say that the only reason why I was successful with that first company is because I come from a background of door-to-door -door sales in my 20s. I did freelance copywriting. I did telemarketing. I did customer service. So I had some skills to bring to the table. Plus, I had a real fire that I didn't want to be on sickness benefits for the rest of my life to go through the process. But... It took me with my first MLM for five years, okay, it took three years before I started making 100000 a, a year, okay. It took five years before I broke the multiple six-figure mark and I literally needed hundreds of <laughs> thousands of thousands of people in my team to do that, you know. Fast forward here just in brackets, so imagine this in brackets, okay. It blew me away because when I realised, okay, crossed over the 290, again, see average earnings below. But just to show you what's possible because you do not need a team of tens of thousands of people to make the big money here in Empower, to make decent money here in Empower. All I've done is personally, personally helped 390 people start at the 25, okay, over the last 16 months. My team is just under the 500. I mean, seriously. It's like a new business, <laughs> really. It's only just the beginning stages, yet because of the business model that we have, because Dave and Dave pay us 100% commissions, you know, on everything except the masters, but then we get 3,000s that um, Rita was talking about, because we're actually paid as if, as if we virtually almost own the company, as if we almost created the products, but we don't have any of the headaches involved in it, Okay, that's why I've been able to earn over 290000 and that just blows my mind. And it blows my mind because I know that with any other business model, no way. And it blows my mind because even though I've been successful in MLM and uh, all sorts of things happened, I ended up retiring from MLM, ended up doing affiliate marketing and, and was doing well, still earning about 10 k a month. I was comfortable. This is important. I was comfortable earning between eight and fifteen thousand dollars, okay, for a long time. If ever I got over that, I would self sabotage myself. Okay. <laughs> I would self sabotage myself and get it back down to the nice comfortable between eight and fifteen thousand. I'm gonna share with you why. I only recently realized this in Denver. I had a massive bake breakthrough that just changed everything for me and it may help you too. So 
Fast forward to 2011, because I still had the back issue, I had a, a surgery, because I was close to being paralysed too, Rita. I fell in the shower and prolapsed my disc even more, and if I didn't get surgery, I would have had quadriraquina syndrome and would have been paralysed. And that surgery actually did help. But over time, just more damage happened. Then in 2011, the shit really hit the fan, pardon the language. Okay, We were moving house, we just bought a house closer to town here in Wood End, and I was packing my books in my boxes. And I ended up prolapsing my disc and compressing my nerve, but compressing my nerve so badly, it actually ended up damaging it. And I had surgery in May 2011, and the surgeon was able to get the nerve out, but it was so jammed in, he said there's a very big chance or 80% chance of nerve damage. And that's exactly what happened. So what happened was, is in, throughout 2011, I was in 24-7 nerve pain. Even after the surgery, it felt like I just had an electrical cord wrapped around my leg, burning me 24-7. And to cope with the pain, I had to be on Oxycontin and Endone, and on average I'd need one or two, sometimes even three morphine inje injections a month to cope. And what happened was, it it literally just about almost destroyed my business that I was running at the time. Okay, because see, with most business models, you need to be able to work full time. If you want to make over eight thousand or ten thousand a month, okay, you need to be able to work at least eight hours a day if you have the skills. You might need to work longer than that until you develop the skills. But once you have the skills, usually it takes about eight hours a day because you need to be on the phone. And and Rita was talking about that. We were actually involved in the same the same sort of high ticket at the time. So she sort of thought was there when that all sort of happened to me. Though I didn't really go full on into it. Though she probably more so with Rita because we worked quite closely. And so what happened was is my income just started going down the toilet. I, I could count on one hand how often I was able to make over 10k with that because I couldn't work full time anymore. I could only manage a few hours a day. Okay, I'd stand it for as long as I could cope with the pain and then I'd just have to stop. I couldn't do the phone work anymore. My phone skills went out the window because the reality is, again, with most business models, you need to have the phone skills because most people, you know, after they watch a presentation, get told to call you or, you know, very much you need to be involved in the sales process, which is not the case here with Empower. So a whole year later, it was February 2012, oh... <laughs> Our credit cards were maxed out, um, our savings were almost dwindled away. I had just not very long ago been told by my, my surgeon that that was as good as I was going to be and I was going to be that way the rest of my life, you know, and to be grateful it's not terminal. So again, Scott, my heart goes out to you because how any, if you're a doctor, how any medical pro profession can say that to anyone is beyond me, you know. So words are so important. You can't, you cannot take that on board and you cannot believe anyone that tells you that you can't do something, never ever take it on board because it's not true. You've seen Scott is living proof of it and, and you're going to see that I am too. Because what happened then was in February 2012 though, I came close to giving up because a bit like Rita, I started feeling like, well, what am I, I haven't just ruined my own life, okay. I've ruined my family's life. I had two little girls then, they were like two and um, or four, turning on four, about four-ish, my elders at that time. You know, my partner had to do absolutely everything because I couldn't. I was just this blob on mattresses all over the house, you know, and I couldn't even support my family anymore, you know, properly either. So I felt like I was just this huge big burden on my family as well. But then I had a couple of things happen to me that were quite magical that made me decide, no, I'm not going to give up, okay? I'm not going to give up. I'm going to find a way to support my family again. This is too important, okay? Because when you have children, they watch they watch you. That They see what's happening in your life. And I didn't want my girls to, to think that I gave up, you know, that I let what happened to me beat me. So I had to find a way. There had to be a way to be able to get out of that mess, you know, to be able to support my family again. So when I first found Empower, it was actually in late March, okay, that was sort of my main focus, my main motivation was simply to support my family again. And the bit like you, um, Tam, when you saw the video, I just knew it. 
Okay, the minute I saw that video, and I think a lot of you felt that way almost as well, I just knew that this was in, and I actually joined it on the 30th of March 2012, so I would never forget the date, because that was actually the date that my mother passed away. My mother passed away when I was 25, and she was a massive inspiration in my life. To this day, she's still my hero, and she's why I didn't give up, really. She sent a kookaburra to me. That's another story. <laughs> okay. But what happened was when I started with Empower, I emptied my cup, okay? Even though I had 11 years experience or 10 or whatever it was at that time, I had lost all confidence. I really had. My brain was like mashed potatoes because of all the drugs anyway. And I just thought, right, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to follow the training that we have here. And I'm just going to do exactly what Dave and Dave tell us to do. I'm going to follow at least seven of the core commitments because I couldn't do the events at that time <laughs> to begin with and just get all in by all the products as I don't see any sense in marketing something if you don't own it, if you don't even know what's even in it. You can't properly represent something unless you fully understand what it is that you're representing. And so I thought if I'm going to take this seriously and I'm going to put my name to it, okay, I'm going to own these products and make sure that they have value and, and um, that's why you know everybody here on this panel owns all the products and the value is like 10 times if not more so. I have not had to buy a single how-to product since I've joined. Okay, <laughs> That's how good they are. So really oh, it's amazing and it's just through applying that information, okay, um, yeah, I was able to get back on track and support my family and pretty much once the financial thing was out of the way. Then what was, was quite extraordinary was then I was sort of inspired by the communi community, by Dave and Dave, to think, well, I can get myself to a vent. Maybe now I can focus on finding a way to stop the pain, you know, finding a way to be able to get myself physically strong enough to be able to attend an event. Because when you hear this panel talk about the power of events, it, it's so key. You know, every single person on this panel has had a transformation, has had a breakthrough due to the event. They would not be at this stage that they are at their business now if they had not attended an event and been able to be there for real. So what happened was I was video streamed in in Austin at that time, just before that I had a ketamine infusion, I had to spend seven days in hospital to get that done and that worked. Okay, but after two years of being housebound and not able to sit, stand or walk for an extended period of time, I had to learn how to sit, stand and walk again. So I had to go through rehab. So my Empower Network business sort of gave me the luxury to focus on getting myself fit enough to be able to come to events. And I wasn't quite at that stage at Chicago. <laughs> I was in the middle of rehab at that time. But what I didn't know until Denver is I was sabotaging myself again. And let me tell you why. Because I don't want you to sabotage yourself, okay? I want you when you get started with us or you're already with us, okay, for you to fly and for you to not get in your own way and for you not to hold yourself back, okay? Because when I was in Denver and it was a Sunday afternoon, I was watching David Wood speaking, okay? And David Wood started speaking about how some people have only ever known poverty in their family for generations, okay? And how, how, as, how as a result some people don't feel comfortable, have never felt comfortable with earning more than anyone else ever has in their family, okay? They don't want to earn more than their father who is a hero. They don't want to earn more than their grandparents. They don't want to, you know, be the first millionaire in their family or anything like that, okay? And as I was hearing him speaking, it was seriously, I literally um, fell to my knees by the chair. It was actually next to Chuck Marshall and a couple of the other leaders there in the, the top 200 part of things there in, um, <laughs> in front of the stage. I literally, seriously, just started bawling. I just started crying, weeping. Like, I mean, it was just it, this outpouring of emotion and I just sat down, literally kneeled down on the chair and it was like I started seeing my life up until that point flash before my eyes. And I realised, oh my Lord, you know, my mother was a house cleaner, my father was um, a bus driver, migrated from Spain to Australia when I was seven, okay, but unlike your family, didn't go from rags to riches, okay, <laughs> Tam, my family didn't do that, you know, unfortunately, they didn't have access to the thinking or what have you that could have enabled them to create a, a different life for themselves here, they struggled. 
you know, I grew up in Housing Commission flats and Housing Commission housing in Broadmeadows, one of the roughest sort of suburbs here in Melbourne at, at the time. I mean, my grandparents, oh, well, my grandfather was actually killed in the Spanish Civil War in front of his wife who was pregnant with my mother after they let him out during the Spanish Civil War. And then my grandmother was also a hero of mine. She ended up selling lemons door to door to be able to support her family rather than prostitute herself. So she's one of my heroes. You go back even a few more generations, there were gypsies. Okay. So all this was flashing flashing through my through my mind as I was lying there crying. And then I realized that all through my life I would allow a certain level of success when I did door to door, I would allow a certain level of success, but once it hit over a certain level, I would self sabotage it. I'll find an excuse or reason to walk away. I did it in my 20s with door to door. I'd built a business up to the stage it was earning over 21K, okay, when I was 22 or whatever I was. But then I found a reason to just walk away with $5 in my pocket when I could have worked it out, okay. I did it again in my MLM days. Okay, for five years building with a company, got it to the stage where I was almost earning 40k, 30 between 30, 40k. That freaked me out. No, I don't deserve it. Okay, what did I do? Made ever had every excuse in the book to pull the plug on that too and walk away. Okay, and then went back to doing things that helped me earn just a comfortable amount of money that I was comfortable earning because I didn't believe I deserved it. I didn't believe I was worthy. Who the hell am I? It would just be greedy. I brought in all those things to say money doesn't grow on trees and all the rest of it. I got told all of those things too and I just kept self-sabotaging myself and then even within power. Okay, <laughs> After my first year or whatever it was, I would have been happy to have earned what I did my first two, three years. Okay, but when I sort of crossed over the quarter of a million in 14 months, again, see, please see average earnings. Okay, I sat down with my partner and said, you know what, I would have been happy if we had earned this over the next two, three years. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to focus on getting fit enough to get to an event. I'm not going to worry about my personal results. I'm just going to keep things ticking over. I was doing it again, but thank God this time I didn't walk away. And as I realised all that lying down on the on the on the thing, just realised like crystal clear, I was literally sabotaging myself. Had been, I just let it go. I just literally got up, sat back in the chair. It was actually next to Diva Ranger. She just oh, sister from another mother. That woman, okay, sat next to sat back on the chair next to her, and I just felt myself let it go. I just let it go, and then all of a sudden I just looked up again at Dave on the stage. And this time I saw myself there. It was, a str it was crazy. I saw myself there with my family, fit and strong, picking up my millionaire team club ring. Okay. Everything changed in that moment. And then I realised what my why was. I realised what my dream was. I realised what I'm supposed to do. And that's to break the chains of generational poverty in all of its forms forever. Okay, not just for myself, but for everyone. For me, I want to break the chains of generational, you know, poverty in all of its forms, thinking absolutely everything. And I want to be the first millionaire in my family because my family deserves it. Because if I do it, then maybe my family, my cousins, my aunties, my uncles all over in Spain and wherever they may be may realise that they can break it too and that they can do it too. I want to break the chains of um, generational poverty because I don't want my kids to ever allow their thinking or impoverished, even have ever impoverished thinking infect their life and stop them from achieving what it is that they're meant to do. Because you see, having money doesn't make you evil. If you're an arsehole when you're poor, you're going to be an arsehole when you're rich. Okay. If you're a good person when you're poor, you're going to be a good person when you're when you're rich. All it will mean it will magnify who you are, and it means you can have more of an impact, whether it's for good or not. You know. And it's took 45 years of my life to finally let that go. Okay. And I want to see everyone let it go. And I think as Australians as well, I think I want to share this because as Australians, we all come from somewhere else. Australia is a really young country. When you think about it, it's not like England and Europe and all that. They have a lot of old money, you know, <laughs> Rockefellers and all of that. 
Here in Australia, we have our Murdoch's, our Packers, but there's a really a lot of new money, and we've got people who have migrated here to Australia who were convicts, you know, from Scotland and Ireland or whatever, who were sent here because they stole a you know, loaf of bread to feed their family, you know. We have people who migrate here like refugees, you know, from, from all over Asia or what have you. We have people like me from who migrated here to the lucky country because, you know, to build a better life from Spain, from Greece, from Italy. Australia is like a melting pot of different cultural backgrounds all over. So I think in many ways Australia suffers from impoverished thinking. I mean, have a look at who is trying to look at our politics. I mean, you only have to look at Tweedledum and Tweedledee at the moment. I mean, who do you choose? Because our political leaders don't even have any vision. Neither one of them. They're full of it. And we have to choose between Tweedledum and Tweedledee? Okay, it's, it's just crazy. Okay, so I think even here in Australia, we suffer from the tall poppy syndrome. It comes across there. If someone's successful in Australia, oh, well, then his mum and dad must have got that for him or, or he must have, you know, some reason, whatever it is, let's tear that person down. In America, they don't do that. That's what I love about America. In America, someone is successful. Like, How do they do it? That's fantastic. wonder what it is that they did to do that. They've got the right thinking. They understand creating something, you know, and the income only reflects what you've created and the, and the sort of personal growth that you have. So I think here in Australia, we have to do one thing. We have to get rid of our impoverished thinking. We have to stop thinking the way our ancestors have made us think. And we need to start creating a new future, not only for ourselves, but for everyone that comes along past us everyone that comes along in the future to create a totally different, not just country, but a totally different influence in the world. Because Australia's like not even taking notice of half the time. But we should be. You know, and it's crazy for me to think that here we are just even online, that you can do that. It doesn't matter what your background is. It doesn't matter what your country is. It doesn't matter who you are. You can use Empower Network to literally Remove the layers in your onion, you know, every onion, because if you have an onion, you have the layers, okay, and it'll help you remove the layer that you don't even know it's there that could be stopping you. And then you can then start just by being the example that you are helping others break through as well. And for me, I mean, the greatest gift to me with what the Empower Network represents, it's about that. It's about helping people peel back those layers, helping people figure out who they are and why they are the way they are, helping people isolate their self-limiting self -limiting beliefs that are stopping them from being all that they can be and letting it go. That's why it's so key to get to the event because if I hadn't gone to the event and at the event, just to help you see, I had crossed over about 260. I've been back less than a month and now I've crossed over 290. I'm the same person but what changed was how I thought. What changed is how I thought I finally got it. I finally let it go and I finally got very clear about my why and ain't no one and nothing stopping me because it's too important. People need to be free and no one's going to be free if they're still worried about money. No one's going to be free if they're not going to let themselves earn as much money as they can so they can make a difference like Scott who wants to go for the, the, the Wish Foundation or whatever foundation you want to go for. So don't let your thinking get in the way because Australians can be sceptical. Okay, I get it. Question everything. Is it real? Is it whatever? This is real. Okay. <laughs> You've heard me share some of my story. You've heard Scott share some of his story. You've heard everybody on this panel share their story. But I tell you what, there are people right now who are commenting who are successful here as well. There are people from all over the world, hundreds of thousands of people who are successful here as well. And you can add your name to it. You can be the next success story. You can be the next top income earner in your country because they probably haven't even joined yet. It could be you. Okay. All you have to do is get out of your own way, believe that you can, be inspired by everybody that you're listening here to today and everybody else you're going to get exposed to because we are a family. Get yourself to the events okay, and join if you haven't already. Join now. Join whoever sent you here because you will not regret it.
Bravo, bravo. Jolly good show there. But you know what? This is changing lives, you know. I mean, I think the thing when I met Dave and Dave as well there, and I first saw because you know this is real. I think the fact we even get to meet together as people every ninety days is, is just amazing. I cannot wait for the next event. But I'll never forget when I first saw David Sharp and David Wood, and I was sitting there at the table, and he was just aside from me, and he looked at me, and I looked at him, and I just started crying, and he called me over, and then he just put, held me by my shoulders, just looked me in the eye. And I just lost it because how do you thank someone that has changed your, enabled you to change your life? Because you see, in 2011, I couldn't do it. You know, I would have lost my house, absolutely everything, regardless of my skills. It's only because of the business model they have here and because of their true desire to help people be free, to help people break through whatever is stopping them. And you've seen it, like how they have behaved with Scott. You know, what they have done for so many people, it's there in the actions because a company is only as good as its owners. It's only as good as its people. You know, so David and Dave are the kind of people that will not let cancer go through their, 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 their company. They're not going to let people who are doing the, the right thing stay, okay? They want this company to be around forever just like we do. And when you see the kind of lives that have been changed, and it's so many, I mean, how, how, can, how do you say thank you, you know? It goes beyond anything. And I think you don't really get that until you're on the inside, until you start going through the products and still you start following the eight core commitments, until you get yourself to an event and actually really experience it. And when you do, you just realise how what we have here is so special. And, and it's again, it's only the beginning, you know. Does anybody have anything final they want to say, you know, before we finish up? Thank you so much for hanging around. It's been a long one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the sun came up behind me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love it when it does that, Erica. Oh, That's the I'm second gonna... time now. <laughs> oh, sweetie, you're awesome, darling, and you just you just closed that out beautifully. And, you know, like you say, how do you – oh, am I still here? Yes. Yep. <laughs> like how do you thank someone? Like how do you thank someone like Dave and Dave for putting a platform together mm that can ha literally help clueless newbies like, you know, most of us are who start this, make this work. I noticed that my flag was back to front for the entire show. <laughs> <laughs> so and, you know, you same someone? experienced marketers or people in chronic pain or blind people, deaf people, you name it, there's a 12 -year -old story. 12-year-old kid. 12-year-old yeah. kid with father's approval. Okay, you got to be 18 to join, but you can join younger if you've got father's approval. But no matter what you say to yourself, why you can't do it, there's someone who is doing it regardless. Exactly. Okay, so you might as well make the decision to do it too. Make the decision. No, nah, I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to let whatever's going on in my life stop me. Okay, if you're already in, just get more committed. Just get more focus. Refocus. Go through the ACOR commitments. Follow what's in your products. Just do it. Just make it happen because it's worth it. Trust me, it is worth it, okay? And it's fun if you do, okay? Better to go fast than slow. And if you're someone who's just considering the opportunity, well, you don't need to look anymore, okay? It's here. Just get in. You've got nothing to lose. Just get in. Go and see on the inside. Go through the fast start training. Get plugged into the support that's there because you can you can make your dreams come true here, you know, if, if you just make the decision that, yes, you're willing to listen, you're willing to learn and willing to make it happen and do what it takes to make it happen. And if you do, it doesn't matter if you're a newbie or experienced marketer, you can do it here faster and quicker and easier than anywhere else. And you'll hear that over and over again because it's the truth, you know. Mm -hmm. It's just honest goddamn truth, you know. But at the same time, please click the link for average earnings. But if you're not average, then come and join us because the only policy we have is no wussies, no whingers, in other words, in Australia. No whingers, please. So if you're not a whinger, <laughs> yeah, come and join us. But I can think I that's something? it. You can. Right. Yeah, I was just going to say just what you were saying, like um, the, the thing that um, really confuses me with a lot of people is that like me, I went to work for 60 hours a week and mm -hmm. I mean, this is the question I've got for everyone. Now, if you didn't put the effort in at your job, your shitty job that I don't have to go back to anymore, what would happen to you? Would you be fired? Yep. You know, yeah. everyone knows that, that if you turned up and did your job half assed well, that's the Australian way, but you know, like, <laughs> it, 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 you would be fired. 
and this is what I can't understand. You, you, and then some people will go to the lengths of someone will go, well, why should I join you? Why should I this, that, the other? You're the CEO of a multi-million dollar business. You don't mm. understand that yet. That everyone on this now, everyone in this this hangout, everyone will be making a million dollars a month mm. within the next few years. It's it's inevitable. Mm. Mm. With what the technology and everything's going on, start acting like it. If you don't put the mm. effort in, you'd be fired mm. at work. So why would you want to be give your hundred and ten percent to someone who's making all the money and you're just stuck at your job? Why why would you not put the effort in for your own own business, your own life? What what I don't, this is the one thing that baffles me with a lot of people. Yeah. Is why wouldn't you treat this mm. like you would your job? Put your heart and soul. You have no idea that you will be able to get on a plane and go to America every three months. I get bored. I jump on a plane and go to <laughs> Bali for a surf. I made three thousand dollars <laughs> while I was surfing. You know, it, it, this is the thing. You will work your heart out, and I did for twenty years, making other people mm -hmm. happy. Yeah. Working. If you don't put the effort in, you're fired. Why wouldn't you do this for your own business? Yeah, true. Like I was seven years building with a telecommunications company and, you know, doing everything and oh, dot me in the, you know, the rubbish bin as soon as I injured myself. Yeah, you know, they, exactly. they, could, they could care less, you know. Uh, so exactly. why why is it some people will work harder for other people than they will for themselves? Why is it? And I think it's because they know that if they go to their job, they're going to get paid that whatever an hour. They know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Whereas if someone comes with that employee thinking, they get online, they don't know for sure what they're going to be making or whatever it is. It's not a, a, like a certainty the way it is with go through a job. But what you need to understand is that you can work, you know, full time on your job, but you can work part time on your fortune, as Jim Rowan says, because profits are better than wages. Okay. Mm -hmm. Profits are better than wages. You can just literally learn and earn as you go. Have the safety of your job. I get it. I will never say to someone who's coming new online, if you can avoid it, <coughs> to give up your job and just come in full time, go for it, you're going to be making money in your first month. I would never say that. I'll say, brilliant. Let your job cover your, your, you know, your living expenses and work part time on your fortune. Get the skills. Because eventually what's going to happen, it happened to Ryoba Kiyosaki, it's happened to so many people, is you're going to be able to say bye-bye to that day job. Your business is going to take over and your profits can rise ridiculously quickly. I mean, you never get a pay rise to kind of, you know, how quickly your income can grow when you run your own business or when you're paid the way we are paid. is just crazy and it's not based on formal education. It's not based on nepotism, okay? It's based on you. It's a level playing field. It doesn't matter if you're 18 or you're 72. Doesn't matter if you're black or white, yellow, green, whatever. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what your religion is. Doesn't matter if you're gay, bi, straight or transgender. Okay. Doesn't matter. It's a level playing field. You have exactly the same opportunity as anybody else. And it's just you. You're the CEO. And you can just get there at your own pace and away you go. And you can... Oh, why would you work for anybody else if you don't have to? Mm -hmm. You know. Can I add something? Mm. Sure, Just, uh, go Tam. Quickly. Yeah, uh, like this is the thing. A lot of people got to understand this. When you come into this business, you don't want to focus on the sales, but you mm. want to focus on the progression that you're mm. going to be making. Uh, you know, one analogy I have for all of you guys, and what the Empower Network is actually is, is imagine a pizza store, right? And they've got a storefront, they've got um, graphics, they've got an oven, they've got employees, they've got dough to make the pizzas, right? They've got a whole business set up, everything's ready, and there's management behind that and all that kind of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you can literally come and pay, you know, whatever they're selling the pizzas for, like uh, seven bucks. So you pay seven bucks one time. And then you can sell pizzas for the rest of time. You don't have to worry about customer service. You don't have to worry about you know any of the the business stuff in the background. You have now uh, a business that's working for you, right? And all you have to do is uh, bring people to the store and make 100% commission, right? But a lot of you guys, you know, again, you want to focus on the progression. Uh, everything that you're going to do, if you're new to the internet and you start mm. and, and you hit the link below and start with us, right? Um, you know, we're going to teach you how to generate leads. We're going to teach you how to slowly, eventually get your sales. But you know, if you if you do what you're t 
taught in the system and you generated one single lead, let's say using a Facebook strategy, um, that's that's called progression. That's one lead. You know, you should be excited. And if you can generate one lead, you can generate mm. two, and then you can generate three, and then eventually you're gonna, you know, get one sale. And it might be the first twenty-five dollar sale, but you know that's called progression. And then um, then you can get you know if you do if you could do it once, you could do it a hundred times, you could do it a thousand times, right? So and imagine this, right? If you start today, right? And for the next five years, if you take it slowly and just just trying to get build progression, right? Um, you know, five years from now, you're going to be in a different place than you are still working in your job. You're still working in your job five years from now. Where do you think you're going to be, right? You're still working in the job, or you might be looking for another job, right? So this is what we've got in front of you. So you know, for a lot of you guys, start today. And like Christina said, don't you know you don't need to quit your job or anything like that. Mm. Start. Building, you know, we're teaching you how to become Stop doing it. marketers. Start doing it, and and for for those of you guys who have other businesses that you're, you know, you're passionate about, you can learn what we teach and build that business as well. So that's all I have to say. Mm, absolutely, just just do it. So worth yeah. it. <laughs> really is change your life forever. Just another mm. thing that I think. Um, but just on, on the whole thing with um, people's success, another thing that I find is that don't be afraid of money. Don't be scared mm. of it. Yeah. I think the hardest thing is a lot of people, you know, they like, you know, 20 years on a job site. Look, I've always done good with money, you know. We, we, we knock on your door and um, you're up for a big bill, yeah, in, a pl in Australia plumbing. But um, people are afraid of money. And I, I had a hard time dealing with the fact that, you know, I'd worked for 20 years and people are earning more in a month than I was in a year. And it's hard mm. to deal with. And a lot of people either, I mean, if anyone on this, this call is in love with money, let it go. You know, let, let the fact that it's only money, it's a, it's a material product. If you let go of it and embrace yeah. it coming and going, it, it, you'll do so much better. And, and one thing that I learned um, in Denver, one person, or not Denver, it was San Diego, I think, someone said that, you know, people will throw out fifty to sixty dollars worth of food a week on average in America. You know, so if everyone goes out and puts fifty dollars in the bin or a hundred dollars in the bin tonight, you won't you'll you'll lose sleep because you're wondering if that hundred bucks is still in there. But you, you'll throw you'll throw food away worth hundreds of dollars a month, but they won't spend a few hundred dollars on investing in their future, on education, mm. on on mm. books, on anything. They just won't do it. They, and you know, just think to yourself when you throw a plate of food away or, or a steak that's been in your fridge for too long, you're throwing away twenty dollars there, but you won't spend twenty dollars on a bit of solo ads. It's just things like mm. that that people hold on to money too tight, and it's like a bar of soap. The harder you hold on to it, the quicker you'll lose it. Yeah. You just in, in, embrace the fact that your yearly income will be. A monthly income, and you have to believe that. I know that. And um, good old Vic said that his goal is a million dollars a month. And I just sat there and went, "Well, <laughs> if he can do it, I'm doing it." You know, it's simple. <laughs> yeah, you got to believe. You got to believe he can. Mm. It is. Well, think about it. It is so realistic that it's. It, and you, as you said, you've only got a few hundred. I've just ticked over two hundred people. You know. And, and yep. the money that you that, that you've earned, I mean, three hundred people, five hundred in your team. I mean, yep. you know, you only Ridiculous. need a hundred strong people, and that was my dream: having a hundred people in my team earning fifteen to twenty grand a month by the end of this year. And you do the maths. I don't want to build my own. I'm about it's about it's about you who hasn't joined yet. If you make money, we make money. We make money exactly. We invest. Yep. You know, yeah. Yes. I'm going to say. You work, you work hard. I make sure you work hard and you're successful. I'm going to make money off you. Let's not lie about that. We do, you know. But if we focus on people who are too worried, oh, oh no, oh the money's been passed up. Oh crap, you know. Focus on the money that's below you. Help those people make money, and you get a pat on the back by getting sixteen hundred bucks a month from someone. You know, they're making good money, and you know. Focus on what you can do for others in every aspect of your life, and forget about yourself. And mm. yeah, it'll come back. Just it fight will. for everyone else. Don't put yourself ever in any position because everyone out there is more important than me. 
everyone in my team I want to see become better people and then they can become better people by helping people below them you know and that's the thing and everywhere in life put other people first like my beautiful mm -hmm. beautiful amazing girl like she's my my queen you know and I put her first and ever since mm -hmm. doing that oh man my life is just catapulted catapulted well you nailed it right there you know um, Scott it you know it right there. It, it's so much. If you it's, it's, and if you have it more than just you, that's what makes a whole difference. You, what you want to create has to be bigger than you. It has to be yeah. about wanting to make a difference and, and wanting to, you know, leave your own mark in this world and wanting to inspire other people and wanting to see other people achieve what they want. There's no greater feeling than that, you know. Yeah. And the money just hunts you down when you do that. But you do have yeah. to. Get rid of scarcity thinking and realize you've got to give before you receive. <laughs> it's exactly. a law. <laughs> yeah. You've got to give before you receive, okay? So don't worry yeah. about it. Give, 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 give. You'll get back tenfold. You know, yeah. you really will. Mm. Perfect. Absolutely. All right, I think we've been on here. Woo! Look at this. I don't even know how long we've been on. But I just want to say. <laughs> Rita, I know you're going to, you're lucky she said you were right. I just, just want to thank everybody for taking the time to, to hang out with us and stay here this long, especially if you're still here. We really, really appreciate you. I know Tam has, get, has gotten this hangout recorded. So what will happen is once it's all finished, the recording will be up here. So, you know, any time you have anyone who, who says to you, hey, does it work in Australia? Hey, does it work in New Zealand? You know, you'll be able to pop this recording here on your own blog post, for example, and then just share. Send them, send them to the recording so they know that yes, absolutely is possible. And it's not just possible for an Australian or someone from New Zealand or Singapore or what have you, it's possible for anyone in the world. And um, lock arms with whoever sent you here and then we look forward to seeing you at one of the events real soon. <laughs> That's where all the fun happens <laughs> even more. So we'll see you at an event and thank you guys for your time. It's been great to have you here and thank you everybody for attending. It's been great to have you here too. All right, take care. Thank you, Christina. Adios. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. Erica. Thanks, Scott, Thanks, Tam, Rita. Love your guts. See ya. Love you guys. <laughs> Bye. Bye.